All right. Hello and welcome to Aetherite Radio Gamer Skips Final Fantasy 14 podcast and Fusion X. Joining me today, we've got Aldino, we've got Zanidra, we've got Rook, and joining us once again, we've got Brian Hi, from Work to Game. Brian, how are you? We're doing good. Doing good. A little tired. Uh, just had a new baby, but we're doing good. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations. Uh, number four. Technically, I have a, counting my wife, I have a raid squad ready for Destiny 2, so we're just going to turn kids up. We've always yep. wanted six, so maybe here in a couple years when we got two more, yeah. we'll have our, our own raid squad for 14. Boom. There you go. <laughs> That's how you do it. You do it. Really like, I, like, nobody is missing raid night. Yeah, get you your homework them. done. It's eight, eight o'clock. Let's go. It's, kid. it's like, such a different approach. I mean, RMTs are like, we'll just bot everything. You're like, no, we're gonna get actual humans. Yeah. It'll take a little while, but it'll I'm be worth it. Type. It's definitely not cost effective. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so our discussion today, we're going to talk about the future of Final Fantasy XIV on consoles. But before we get into that, we've got just a little bit of news. It's a lot of bit of news, but there's only a like a lot of it. A few. Th- it's, it's a lot. All right. So uh, next week, the 14 hour broadcast is going to be starting up. Um, we will get a letter from the producer part 56. Um, that's I don't me. know which it is anymore. It's like L I I V. I looked it up the other day because I was like, which one is this? Because I suck at Roman numerals. It is 56. Um, yeah. So that live letter is going to be going up uh, Friday, December 13th at 8.30 p.m. Pacific, which means we can actually watch yes. it. That'll be nice. So That's exciting. Great. Could be I'm great. so happy when it's not the middle of the night. <laughs> like three it in the morning. Me. Yeah. Well, it's three in the morning <laughs> so, and then they go to their part two and you're like, is there really good information here? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. The part <laughs> twos are always the worst because they bring on the guests. They don't translate anything. Mm-hmm. And then you still want to like, well, for me anyway, I'm like, show me the new merch. Yeah, what, what's it gonna be? <laughs> um, this this though, um, they're doing special guest uh, is gonna be Soken um, with Q and A from the forums. So they probably will translate that stuff. I would. Yeah. I hope. I Fingers so. crossed. I mean, eventually, um, if, if nothing else, you know, like the Reddit community does a really good job. It also. Yeah. Oh, Reddit. Yeah, Reddit will be on top of it. It, yeah. it. Oh my gosh, when when they opened the thread up for this, there was like, the, one of the first replies was asking about new hairstyles for Fiera and Rothgar. And I'm like, yes, I'm sure Soken could definitely. Yes, totally. <laughs> so, yeah. I've the reading designed... comprehension is not strong with this one. <laughs> uh, they want to know. They want to okay. know. Yeah. yeah. Know those hairstyles. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to submit questions, there's a thread up on the forums. I'm not sure when those are going, how long they're taking those. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, check that out. Um, then they're going to have NGC's Final Fantasy XIV uh, Season 5. Um, hosted by um, Edo-san and Fumichi, who are popular uh, streamers over in Japan. They do a mm. uh, a show. I looked this up. It was um, like NGC stage or something like that. They, they, they stream a lot of stuff. Um, so they're going to be doing some stuff with uh, Yoshida-san. Um, then uh, that's at 11 p.m. Pacific. Um, at 1 a.m. Pacific, uh, we're going to have a stroll with Yuichi Nakamura, who is the voice actor for Thancred in Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he's hey, gonna just Yoshi P, go in he's just gonna go day. to a world and they're just gonna they're just gonna do some duties and stuff mm-hmm. uh, and then the, the the huge one which is um, taking place from throughout most of this mm-hmm. um, is the Doman Mahjong first anniversary commemorative uh, Final Fantasy 14 Mahjong tournament 2019 that's a that's the, a long can we get yeah. more words in that's there? a that's big a long did they say Mahjong twice they did yes <laughs> <laughs> Mahjong Just to for- make sure you're aware of what Dolby this Mahjong. is. Mahjong, Mahjong, Mahjong. I mean, I mean, they wouldn't want it to be the the Doman Mahjong first anniversary commemorative Final Fantasy 14 Triple Triad tournament 2019, because then that's just that's not yeah. that's confusing. That's an extra Old word. saucer. <laughs> so that that itself runs from 8 p.m. to 5:30 a.m. Pacific, wow. um, and during that, so they're kind of hosting it during everything, mm-hmm. um, and then they'll be announcing victors for that, and then. Um, at the end of the stream from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific, we're going to have the after party. They don't have any specific details for that right now. Um, so there you go. Set your alarms if you want to wake up a little early and see whatever they do. Uh, reminder, this is not going to be translated in mm-hmm. any official capacity. Um, the live letter, of course, will have will have something mm-hmm. from, from Square in that regard. But um, as always, uh, 
look out for the fan translations. Yeah, we, we cover it live and we do a, a very bad job at translating. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's more fun than what they actually say, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, like when uh, when uh, when he was uh, when they were doing and talking about uh, the copied factory and they were just up there, they weren't talking about anything about the copy factory. They were just talking about drinking and fun things they like to do. No, so right. We were all just like, all right, well, we're going to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mog Station Sale, uh, you can now purchase Alma's attire for 12 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, so if that's something you want, you can get it. It looks um, really good. Like when I, yeah, when I saw that, that was actually, yeah. go mm-hmm. ahead. Zin, oh, Zin? Normally, normally they're 18 bucks, but since they gave us the hair already, it's a little bit cheaper. It's 12 bucks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and also you can't dye it because. Why? I don't know why. I didn't know it that. seems wow. like everything that Most you have to them. purchase. Yeah, mm-hmm. it seems to me like it should be dieable, especially yeah. because it's mm-hmm. only one character. It's not even like it's an account wide thing mm-hmm. for you. Like you're going to spend that much money. You should be able to die it. I think it's so weird. Character well, costumes are dieable. And I don't I don't think that you can even use the hair on new races either. Can you? I don't think probably not. Yeah. It's, no, well, definitely not. Uh, they'll, they'll be adding stuff like all. Yeah, the time uh, yeah but I mean, they, they should have added it at its release. I mean, don't they They're, want more money if you sell it something <laughs> yeah. that's dieable? While you're on the mug station, you'll get your die. Like what? Like you have there's, money. Come there's there's so many thoughts that like we could do a whole episode just <laughs> an episode and so oh, it's like ruining no, the mug oh, station this one's for account, everybody. This one's account wide. This is character specific. This is diable. This Definitely isn't is. diable. It's like there is this sense of like okay, <laughs> there, you need you need a matrix to figure out like beer. what is. You okay, want. You cannot. I was gonna say, yeah. If if you okay. if you thought we we hated on uh, what God what was that community in-game thing that we oh i don't remember about i don't even remember what it's called anymore it just it came out and it was terrible oh, i know i just don't want to talk about it. uh was it an f <laughs> i don't want to mention it yeah I don't want yeah to talk yeah about it if, we, if you thought we hated that <laughs> let us tell you how we really feel about the mock station um <laughs> anyway so that's up uh adventure jumpstart sale uh the is sale going is. till but the stuff uh, sells or they wouldn't keep doing it yeah I correct mean, correct yeah. that no, doesn't no, no. mean that they couldn't be better about it um mm-hmm. If you want a jump potion, uh, you can get them on sale till January 27th. Um, everything is marked down uh, 20%, so it's 20 bucks for one of those. Uh, the special patch website has been updated um, for the changes coming in patch 1.15, which is coming in three days on the 10th. So chances are decent that if you're not listening live, the patch is probably up. Um, we're getting blue mage updates. Uh, obviously, the level cap is going up to 60. About uh, we'll time. Like in our log. Yeah. It's almost been a it's, year. It's since a it good was time. Introduced. It's a almost good time a for year. it. It's a good. It's a good lull time they right kind now. Of made yeah. it sound like uh, it would get updated more often, but I yes. guess I understand why it didn't because they would very quickly run out of blue mage. They yeah. should allow it in PvP, yeah. and that would be a nice addition. So yeah. anyway, at the very <laughs> least. At the very least, be interesting. Just give them a set of like, here's your like blue PVP separate anyway, and that's what's yes. a big part of this. It is, yeah. Like, just give them here's your twelve abilities or whatever. We're mm-hmm. not trying to go off of a theme here, and let them play in PVP. Give just give them more of a chance to try yeah. it too. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Right, so <laughs> right now it's just this kind of like weird wart of, of a piece of content like not not because it's bad but because it's just this weird thing that stands out that like there's no mm-hmm. other you know limited jobs it's something mm-hmm. that like if yeah. people weren't really in the game when it was released they're going to come across it and be super confused about yes. what's happening it, yeah. it's really interesting and i'm curious to see with this patch what sort of happens that might kind of lead us into knowing what they're going to do with it in the future hopefully Blue also, yeah. and not to hate on on it at all, because I actually really enjoy it, but I think Blue also actually accentuates the lack of open world content uh, and, you know, to mm. do. And I've long been a ca- like campaigner for like just Conquest from 11, morphed mm. and translated yeah. into how it would work in 14. It, it was a weekly, just like almost like Ish- the Ishgardian Restoration. Like the mm-hmm. whole server's in on this. I'm still, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that our Eureka for for 5.x is going to be a conquest system in Garlemald. Oh, mm. That and or we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Um, so I we're know, also yeah. going to get to four Blue Mage. Uh, there's going to be a new log for completion of uh, level 50 and 60 raid and trial content, which I thought was interesting. Mm-hmm. It almost looks like it's like a duty finder just for Blue Mage groups. Um, I'm really curious to see how well this is received. Um, I want to know, you know I, when you try and go into an alliance, are you gonna have to wait for twenty four blue mages? Blue mages. That's that was my biggest question because if that's the case, 
do that oh, right away because yeah. it's gonna be you thought PvP queues were long. Mm. <laughs> That's gonna be, be even to worse a few them. weeks out. Yeah, you have to it has to be have, the, the rewards have, have to be yeah. there. I think I think though the other thing to probably consider too is um it, it depends on how the system is triggered that you're in the event as Blue Mage because people could probably still do party finders as Blue Mage and get in to stuff just like we were with Crystal Tower stuff when Blue Mage yeah. first came out. But if you enter that way and not through this thing, do you still get the, the rewards? Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll, we'll find, out. find out. Time will tell. Probably not. Um, <laughs> it's going to be, it's gonna be almost right. It's going to be so, it's like, oh, they just, they got it so close to getting it the right way we want it. Yeah. And there's also uh, in, the, in the images, uh, the one showing off the, uh, the new like trial content stuff, uh, we'll, get, we'll get at least one more weapon with the yeah, patch. Just one. Just pro- probably just one. The lack know, of maybe. <laughs> weapons on blue. It's just like I get that they don't do anything, but also yeah. like we have we'll have three. Ooh, yeah, three yeah. three weapon choices. That's At least that's one huge. For primal, like that would be. Says cool. the guy who doesn't even games. really want to play the mage ever. <laughs> I'm just I saying. Give me glamps for my job. I won't play. Well, I mean, you can talk about everybody. Everybody appreciates a good glamour. Come on now. Yeah. Well, and then blue would be something that could benefit from having even its own skills glamourable in the sense that, mm-hmm. like, if you gave the the job, if let's say, because you're going to learn an ability once you learn it, it's learned. But imagine mm-hmm. if, like, you ended up learning it multiple times, that it unlocked other variations of the skill just to be kind of, you know, it just the visual kind of. Oh, you're reaching. I think that's reaching. That's you're asking <laughs> oh, way I, too I, much. I have a thousand things. I will spend Square Enix's money to the moon <laughs> in ideas of like, go do this course. Of course it's easy. Go on. You will buy, you will buy thousands of Alma's attires. That's yeah, right. exactly. It's like, what, what's it going to take to fund this? I, I know a venture capitalist who is <laughs> willing to lose a lot of money on a stupid thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for all the sass, I love that they gave us something that was like totally different and really mm-hmm. is its own thing. And um, it was cool that you mentioned the, I mean, the fact that it kind of draws attention to the lack of certain open world types of content that we have. But I do have to say that some of my like best times with Blue Mage were when it first came out and I refused to use a guide and I just went through all the zones trying to <laughs> test my knowledge of what enemies I remembered, what abilities, what might mm-hmm. be like this. It was kind of this fun little puzzle and it was really great to do with other people. And, and just the amount of people out in the world. Like the thing yeah. that, that I mm-hmm. love about it is the same thing I love about Ishgardian Restoration. It feels MMO-like. Like it's like, even if we're solo, you just like, there's so many people around, around me and just out in... You know, like Thanalyn, like this is great. I love it. You know, and so yeah. that's yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Leveling yeah. it was fun mm-hmm. with the yeah. groups that would go around, like, pulling it, ridiculous stuff. I mean, there's yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I think you know, in, in I mean, it was a different time then. I, did they ever fix that XP glitch? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, that they? came in. That mm-hmm. actually came in with uh, Shadowbringers, okay. um, and that yeah. was the solo piece. Like, at, what you can go and do that same thing in uh, you know on on Tuesday where you just have a high level person with outside the party burning things mm-hmm. down for you you tag it mm-hmm. yeah high level burns it that was that was the worst work. part for me was yeah. was just going around and trying to kill stuff and then have it all like pulled from from under me you know it's like i'm gonna run over there there's a guy and then all of a sudden he's like getting claimed and i'm like oh all right sure fine north mm-hmm. north vanilla and trying to get spells and level oh, was yes worst <laughs> absolute worst what was interesting uh, about it is that we were competing for uh, different mobs and what i saw within the community is that instead of people competing for the mob because you learn it as a team more people were grouping up i met a lot of people on mm-hmm. that day that I, I might not have necessarily teamed up with and uh, anyway so i i appreciated that aspect yeah. there's these little threads yeah. of, yeah. of, of in, like interest that i like you're you were right rook uh It'll be interesting to see also as they introduce maybe more limited jobs, how that all gets fleshed out, because this mm-hmm. is just the starter, you know, first mile of the marathon. And they have to think like, OK, when we're running at mile 20 and then 20, you know, et cetera, yeah. like, what's the system going to look like? We don't want to have to go and redo the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's it for news. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll obviously uh, next week. Um, and we'll say this again at the end of the show. Next week, obviously, we'll be talking about the live letter, but we'll be talking about hands-on with the patch. So uh, mm-hmm. make sure to stay tuned for that. Um, now we're going to jump into a topic we've been waiting a few weeks to talk about. Um, I've been waiting we, we, years we, to talk about it. <laughs> we, we wanted to make sure we had this man to, to talk about this. So, um, gosh, when, I'm trying to think when, when the event was. It was probably about a month ago. Uh, uh, XO19, yeah. XO19 yeah. out in London, um, this big Xbox event. 
Uh, Phil Spencer, when talking to members of the press, said, and I quote, I wanted uh, to let you know, rest assured, that we will be bringing that game to Xbox. We have a great relationship with Yoshida-san, and, we went, uh, and we're working through what that means to bring uh, to Xbox a cross-platform MMO that they've run for years. Mm-hmm. So um, that's, that's point one. Uh, also, a couple weeks ago, during a fan gathering in London, again, London, Weird. Getting, they're getting uh, all the deets, all the, all the good juicy news. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all the all the Xbox love in London. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, during no. a fan gathering, um, people on Twitter were saying that Yoshida confirmed development of Final Fantasy XIV for the PlayStation Five. Uh, PR later clarified and said that while not a confirmation, Yoshida mm. expressed a hope that Final Fantasy XIV Online may one day appear on the next generation of Sony console. So There's there you go. It's. It'll be on PS. Like, come on. Yeah. It'll be it, on. That's just licensing and business deals. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, all right, <laughs> yeah. like what's yeah. this and the how's this going to work? Yet. Yet. They, yeah. they have certain <laughs> things signed with Sony. They can't say language of certain types mm-hmm. and they're working on it. Like, come on. Yeah. Um, so now here, here's, I think, the, the, the biggest part of this conversation here. So when Phil Spencer was talking about this, he said, um, bringing it to xbox he didn't say xbox one mm-hmm. he didn't say xbox one x xbox is a family so, so <laughs> i i want to hear your your thoughts brian because obviously you're the huge xbox fanboy out of out of all of us mm-hmm. here you've been you've been campaigning for years on this i, I want to say I, I, I would clar- classify that i'm i'm a console and a, and a, and a, and a, okay. a video game fanboy in the regards like i love playstation i love nintendo i love xbox i think that when they're all strong gamers win in fact mm-hmm. that uh, I think the best thing that's happened to fans of Xbox was that Xbox got its butt kicked uh, and hasn't really recovered all this generation uh, mm-hmm. because it's forced Phil Spencer into the role and him to think gamer first. I think mm-hmm. that their moves have been really gamer first, and that's actually a strength mm-hmm. and why I'm glad PlayStation is in the position it's been in because it's forced Microsoft to compete just like last generation forced PlayStation to kind of think through and how to, how they want to do it, right? Yeah, so, it it's it's but, interesting because thinking about when Xbox One first came out, you know, the it was the the the, the PR like line. It wasn't yeah. just Xbox One; it was the all-in-one entertainment system. Yes. Xbox yeah. One. That having been mm-hmm. said, not a lot of people will talk about the Connect. I got one for like fifteen bucks at a Penny Arcade garage sale. I absolutely mm-hmm. love the voice commands when watching TV. I just want to throw that out there. The Connect. So here's the, here's a good thing because <laughs> we don't we're not even we didn't include Stadia on this, and I think Stadia is going to be a part okay. of this conversation. Mm-hmm. When we talk console, it's a it's it's a shifting of mindsets. But yeah. on that note, Xbox Connect, the its biggest failure was it wasn't one hundred percent effective. When something mm-hmm. doesn't work all the time, you're going to lose trust in it. When the voice mm-hmm. commands didn't work for Connect, especially right out of the gate, if even it was at like I would say eighty percent for me, it worked eighty percent of the yeah. time. You say so, yeah. you're going to say uh, it, for other people different, especially yeah. different dialects. Yes, uh, different. You know, there's so many different factors of within voice where you're going to just default to the remote. You know, it's like hands down at some point, if it's not going to work or have an odds that it won't work, you're going to get frustrated and you're going to go back to the the remote. Uh, That's the problem with Stadia. Like I have a great connection here in in Texas with it, but others don't. And so it's Mm -hmm. that you're going to run into a situation where if it's not going to be there for you when you want, when you need it, you're just going to go back and you're, you're not going to use it. It's just going to become second nature. Uh, And so that's where uh, the issue with like, for me with connect came into play. Ultimately it's kind of fascinating that what people were originally frustrated or scared about with Connect itself being a, a microphone and a camera in your house, right. we now have all these microphones and cameras in our houses <laughs> with Everywhere. Google, with uh, oh yeah, with Amazon, and it's like now it's second nature. And that Microsoft's integrating with those services because it's just going to be what ultimately takes like what mm-hmm. people have. Like there's no point in having proprietary stuff anymore. Um, yeah, and that's why I, hopefully we'll see like Xbox controllers supported on PlayStation. Because the PC Master Race is really dominating this generation because PlayStation yes. controllers work for it, yep. Xbox controllers Segway. work for it. Segway. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Um, I have not <laughs> really been a co- uh, console gamer since PlayStation 2, so I don't know what Stadia is. Okay. So oh. what uh, what I've been doing has been playing uh, Final Fantasy in the cloud. I've been using Shadow PC. Uh, we're kind of a partnered uh, you know service with them, so we actually get a deal. So just legally letting y'all know like <laughs> right you, guys, you know like I, I i i was using it then we got sponsored uh which is great uh so what it is is just a pc in the cloud stadia oh. remove so it's like stadia when you look at xbox playstation and stadia it's really interesting um xbox and x cloud with game, great uh game streaming it, it's proven like it works as long as you got the internet that can support it 
zero like i'm not i don't see any latency i press mm -hmm. a button it responds yeah. it's really quite like when you start when you when you go hands-on you're like okay this is real uh which is great for me because as a, when i stream and play games all my games all the gameplay is rendered in the cloud uh and my local computer is just managing the stream so i'm able to do a lot more and render at a high quality um mm -hmm. stadia is 100 percent cloud there is no hardware necessary it is a complete beta mvp it is not it is not ready for prime time no. and i would say <laughs> yeah. that where uh stadia marries the strength of pc gaming meaning it's mm -hmm. going to give you the highest quality it's going to always be upgrading it's going to give you the weaknesses uh, uh, of not uh, of console not being able to modify mm -hmm. um there's no updates and stuff like that apply not sponsored by google <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, but, but it's you know, X Cloud is a hybrid of that. You get you own yeah. your games. Stadia, the big issue people are concerned about is ownership uh, and things like that. But it's still kind of a part of the conversation because it's going to be interesting. Google spent billions uh, of dollars investing in this platform. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people think they're going to walk away. I'd say they're not going to walk away for at least fifteen years. You don't walk away from billions of dollars investment just because. No, they're gonna they're gonna at yeah. least at least try and keep it going for the next five years. I think Usually. it's it's interesting. Like thinking back on this, remember on live. Oh yeah, yeah online. Or, Hell, or you remember online. Sega Channel? Yeah, actually, I love Sega Channel. I had my friend had it. We, we my, I couldn't get my parents to convince. Yes, them. we'd go over there yes. and play a bunch of games. It was great. Um, yeah. I, want, I want to just shifting to the conversation though for Xbox, right? Because we do not have a, a date. We do not know that if it's Xbox One. Um, also, a lot of gamers out there, especially when you go on the forums, anytime you talk about Xbox and Final Fantasy fourteen, the concept of yeah. Uh, you know, a gold is, is gold going to be required uh, yeah. is and yeah. honestly, I think a lot of those have been answered uh, in the past, right. but it's still like you have a, a huge wider range of people with their uh, expectations of it. Uh, Xbox uh, had Final Fantasy 11 and had no mm -hmm. gold required for that. There mm -hmm. is precedence before ESO went free to play like uh, it was going to be launch on consoles with a subscription. Mm -hmm. Xbox said gold was not going to be required for it. Yeah, uh, it failed on its original launch. They retooled it and then they ended up launching as a free to play game in which the gold is required. Just like right. uh, I don't know if it's required on yeah. PlayStation. But that being said, the real thing in here is I, I don't think gold's going to be required. Yes. I do think there's going to be a connection with Game Pass and Final Fantasy 14, just like right now. Sure. All of the Final Fantasy games are launching in Game Pass. I don't know what that's going to look like, uh, yeah. but it's going to be interesting if there is a connection, being that Final Fantasy fourteen is a subscription-based game. So that's, that's I'm betting is the deal is more the deal that, that's being worked out <laughs> than yeah. anything else. Um, I think it's it's interesting too, uh, you know, talking about um, eleven, how eleven didn't require Xbox Gold. I think it's also important to note too of when this came out. I mean, eleven came out on three sixty with Otter yeah. gone. Yeah, and. Mm -hmm. It, while while Xbox Live had been well established, I mean Xbox Live was out on the original Xbox, um, mm -hmm. but it was still in its earlier stages, and so this was kind of a thing. They're like, it was. I would I would say that the lack of a membership to play Eleven on the Xbox 360, I would call that like grandfathered in almost, right? It's right. like it was. This is a thing they were just trying, and mm -hmm. it just okay. Uh, but nowadays, yeah, I mean you you never know what they're gonna require. Which which I'm gonna use the segue yeah into into our next topic here. Um, so with with again 11 right it came to xbox with an expansion um we got the the ps4 uh, version and the you know the ps3 stuff it came out with an expansion so when are we going to see 14 on xbox could we see it as early as this summer or are we going to wait for project scarlet and it's going to be only on that and avoid xbox one altogether the my bet, if I was if I was gonna put money down, I would say the smartest choice because it came to PS4 with a with actually a patch, not the expansion, um, because okay. it was still on PS3. That's I would right. bet five right. three. I think that when they're doing the story squish, when they're talking mm -hmm. about all of that, it launches with five three. I mean, I think the, that's okay. that's a smart idea because I was as we've been talking about this, I've been thinking about it as well. And the big thing for me with all of this discussion around what platform, what console, what it, like version of the console the game would come out with, mm -hmm. is that there's so much that goes into that with the idea of, you know, if we put 14 onto the next generation of consoles, right? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that we're going to be seeing the timeline of 14 being like confirmed as you know this many years into the future because we have we have an idea from previous interviews that like 10 years ish is roughly the storyline that they had sort of sketched out mm -hmm. but 
with some of our more recent information, we know that Shadowbringers and the sort of timeline around it is going to bring to conclusion the Hydaelyn Zodiac arc. And then what happens after that as far as like a large scale plot for 14, we don't necessarily know. Right. Um, so if we're looking ahead and we're going, hey, we're going to release it on these future generations, mm -hmm. then does that mean that this is something we can look into like, oh, hey, well, you know, if this comes out with the next one, we're going to see this game releasing for years because you want that momentum of like, we are not, you know, winding down on this game. We are mm -hmm. just starting to ramp up. And I think if they timed it with something like you were saying, the release here with, you know, we're condensing these quests, we're making this more accessible than ever for new players, it would make sense to put it out even on current consoles. Right. Because at that same time, you're going, hey, let's get into this, and then we can take it into the future further if we expand it to future platforms. The other factor on that note, though, is both uh, Xbox and even PS4 have been uh, designed as future forward consoles, uh, meaning that like mm -hmm. your controllers and all your devices, I don't, I can't speak for PlayStation, but I know right. that PS5, they've said backwards compatibility, right? Mm -hmm. So on the Xbox Scarlet, your controllers, all your accessories, those are going to work on yeah. Scarlet as opposed to previous generations where it was kind of like, and now you move it off yep. and now you come in here. So we're seeing more of a kind of a future forward thinking that your games are your games and this is just a, a major hardware jump. Mm -hmm. Now, I know a lot of people and they have said they would rather have it just launch on Scarlet because they, they think of the console limitations, right? PS4 sure. limitations constantly being a thing. That's why I think it's funny when those same people come out and say that they don't want the cloud because it's like, MMOs and, and cloud gaming, once we get the infrastructure, they're going to benefit because right. you're already expecting yeah. to have that. Well, the, the question is how, how far away is that infrastructure, right? Because right? it's, you know, in, in that's United a whole States, other 10, discussion. Years. <laughs> yeah. I'd say it's 10, 15 yeah. years. Yeah. And um, I mean, just, well, looking, just looking at consoles, right? Like, obviously, 14 grappled with the PS3 to PS4 transition so much. Mm -hmm. And the idea that, like, oh, hey, well, if we just put this on the next generation of console, this, this perception that all the limitations will be removed because hardware will be so far in the future right. doesn't totally take into account the fact that, I mean, the game is built on structures that just inherently will either be outdated at some point or have sure. to be updated. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like, it doesn't really matter what console. I think that the game was designed at a time where, I mean, even now we are still grappling with some of the, right. the issues of its mm -hmm. initial sort of, you know, programming and structures. Yeah. And, you know, whether or not they decide to, like, update and keep going forward with future consoles and try to, like, overhaul some of that, or even if we just see, like, a new Final Fantasy MMO come out in a future generation, like, mm -hmm. it's one of those things where yeah. just the just the console itself isn't going to determine really yeah. necessarily what's yeah. going Yeah, I mean, there, there's there's definitely that, that question of, I mean, we've already have precedent for this, right? They already dropped PS3. Yeah. Um, yeah. So After then it's a like... While. And that was right. So that's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so you know you have that that thought of like okay, so maybe by 7.0 they drop PS4 and current Gen X mm -hmm. box hardware if they yeah. launch on that. The but four years I, I think away, it's all, or, you know that, that right. But wow, it's also right. interesting too yeah. to think of um, engine limitations, right? Because there's yeah. they're only going to be able to push it so far, and we know that because of the the rush to get ARR out, it's maybe not the best engine. There's still, you know, when, when we talked to uh, Suzuki-san out at PAX talking about the ways that they animate certain things, it's there's a lot of kind of tricks and shortcuts that they have to use yeah. to do things that by today's standards should be easier to do. Mm -hmm. So that is very much that question of do they just, you know, in, in 10 years, is there Final Fantasy 18 online or do they revamp everything or do they make it a mobile game and yeah. they talk about putting it out I mean, in 2016 and then say nothing for three years. I Who knows? <laughs> The only Where this other could go. precedent that we have for a MMO that lives that long is WoW, and Blizzard yeah. has more money than most companies. You know, yep. in in that in the gaming space, there's not a WoW two. You know, yeah. like their engine is their engine. They they continually patch it and and bring it up to speed. However, it's a, not, it's a, it's a it's good not, thing because you can yeah. kind of look at it with the classic launch and sure. say, huh. A mm -hmm. lot of people, when you literally go and look at this last decade, a lot of people were originally, hey, Cataclysm, but now actually look back at Cataclysm as kind of this really kind of just downfall. It's just taken oh, yes. a long time because you have you have basically sunk in costs. A lot of people were invested mm -hmm. and it took them mm -hmm. until BFA to realize, I haven't been having fun for 10 years. What the F? Yeah. 
Yeah. And, <laughs> and then classic launches. And it's like, it's not a nostalgia thing. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people look at classic in a way. Now, to go under the console kind of concept, again, I think it's on Xbox One. I w- it's a preference. They could yeah. always not do it. But sure. people, they would have to remove PS4 in order for that uh, to be kind of limiting because PS4 to Xbox One, similar similar spec. It's, it's the same. Around. It's the same generation. There's no yeah. reason not to have right. it unless so, they're planning yeah. to drop PS4 in, within the next year. They're planning on jumping, yeah, dropping PS4 in the next year. Mm. By all means, just scarlet yeah. it up and call it a day. No need to do the extra work. <laughs> the other side of it is that Xbox runs Windows. Are we yes. playing on a Windows machine? Yes, I've been playing it this entire time on windows Mm -hmm. Uh, and so essentially from like i know a lot of people think of it's going to overall increase cost and development time no No. unfortunately unfortunately no it's not they are Mm -hmm. going to be testing uh but the cost in that yes you're going to do tests you're going to it's going to take you're going to want to make sure it runs and it patches just fine well you know if you increase by a hundred thousand or 300,000, a lot of players on Xbox have constantly stated they want to play this game. They're not, uh, they don't have the money for a high-end PC and they don't have a PS4, but you know, like I've had a lot of friends who are like, yep, let me know when it comes to Xbox and I'll come and join (laughs) you. You know, all of a sudden you start saying like, well, now we've just grown the base of this game. Uh, It's going to be, I think, a a much more preferred option. But Mm -hmm. back onto the other bigger topic of, do they launch a new MMO or do they sequelize this? When you look at do they do the cataclysm? Is the eighth umbral calamity right. you know, is something we're going to actually stop? I doubt it. I think it's happening. Um, that's just my personal lore theory. Mm-hmm. But then you then you talk about a shift. Do you preserve Heaven's Word, Stormblood, Shadowbringers? Do you preserve this story like classic is preserved? Well, cons- considering right now all the work they're going through to help consolidate ARR, yes, they do keep all of that. You keep it. <laughs> you, and that's why you also have New Game Plus. And like you start looking at all these systems that they're bringing in and layering Mm -hmm. in, why destroy all of that with a cataclysm like 1.0 to 2.0, but or rather preserve it. And you could still continue the story, but now you're building a new engine. Mm -hmm. Now you're building the, Mm -hmm. by the way, the story continues Mm -hmm. here. Maybe, I mean, we like, maybe I think that the story continues 10,000 years in the future <laughs> over here and then we're legends and things like that but There's you can no still Louis go to send us there how are we gonna get there we're not Gosh, this is making me think of early 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 interviews with 14 where uh sure. at the time uh producer Hiromichi Tanaka said yeah like early concept ideas was like we connect this to 11 and like you just go to Eorzea through a door in your mug house <laughs> what yeah well, <laughs> that's not practical at all from, from sounds, a business, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, it again. sounds crazy. Um, there's Path of Exile 2, which is not a second game. It's kind of a patch slash up version, slash, version two, version right. two. Yeah. Now, that idea is interesting for MMOs as well because you could have a patch that kind of transitions it and you can preserve before, but everyone who plays new or you know, people who are still playing can play in the second one as well and go back and forth. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's a prob- That's a better yeah. idea. But does that apply to MMOs instead of ARPGs that are, you know, more contained? I don't. I mean, that's more of like a even even like a, a mobile thing. Like, um, yeah. you know, with with the the FF MMO connection here, they had in in Japan they had Final Fantasy Grandmasters mm-hmm. um, that ran for maybe two and a half three years. Um, they did launch a version two at one point. Uh, the game mm-hmm. doesn't exist anymore. They they ended yeah. up. I was shutting like, it down, I've but never heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was yeah. the Final Fantasy XI mobile that did come out. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> I mean, it was right. the the spinoff. Yeah, it's such an interesting balance because I think that fourteen thought ahead in a way that a lot of other co-op games or MMO games didn't necessarily. The idea of setting yourself up to have systems that fluidly go between console and here. I mean, and even 11 set a precedent for that, right? Mm -hmm. Going between console to PC. And, uh, you know, Brian, when you were talking, I think so much how I really do think that is the future of all of our different platforms. There's always been this Mm -hmm. division between, you know, what we offer versus what they offer. But now we're seeing platforms like Switch that are just like, I don't know, put like a whole bunch of indie games on there. I don't know, just like put, I'll put like that one game that everybody likes, but it's like shooting. It's not family friendly, but we'll stick it on this console anyway. And like, that was a really big step, I think, especially with Nintendo having grappled Mm -hmm. with some of their, Mm -hmm. you know, how they want to control their own, you know, products and things like that. But we have seen that console just take 
off because they're releasing so much there and it's also a good console. But mm -hmm. with all of that said, I've seen, you know, so much come to that that still, you know, MMOs like Warframe, MMOs, I mean, that, you know, you're going through, I mean, even WoW that's PC bound or Guild Wars mm -hmm. 2 that's PC mm -hmm. bound. And there are so many people who come into my, you know, communities or, you know, onto my stream on a daily basis that will say to me, I can't because of X or I'm playing ESO, but I can't join you because I'm on console right. and mm -hmm. we can't play together. Mm -hmm. And the fact that like true cross play is available in 14 mm -hmm. is massive. So yes. expanding yeah. it out to all of those other platforms and having, you know, end game Raiders who even on PC play on a controller is huge, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's well designed for that. But we are also balancing it with this issue of the fact that there are some archaic systems that it was built on. There are some problems with the yeah, UI yep. and the design. And you, like you were saying, the animations and the... Mm -hmm. And so I think they are going to come to this crossroads like WoW has sort of had to deal with where you're going, <laughs> do we just sink the time, energy, and resources into overhauling some of this stuff and you know then making new systems to go forward? Or mm -hmm. do we just keep like trying to patch it enough that the, the story continues, but then you're kind of fighting this issue of this huge backlog of expansions yeah, yeah. and all this story right. weight and all these, you know, or do we, you know, hey, we release it for this console or maybe next console and we keep developing it. And then when we feel like, hey, this is fine, we cut it off kind of like 11 and then we move forward. Well, there's there's big, 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 big development differences between the two games too. Um, 11 is made off of PS2 architecture, which is PS2 why they had to yes. cut the story where they did, yeah. because yeah. it got to the point where they literally had all of the working PS2 dev kits in the world yeah. to keep making content for this game. And it just got to the point where they're not gonna be around forever. We need to, to, to call it. And they're still able to do some stuff, um, but, mm -hmm. You know, one of the, the earlier uh, interviews we had with, with Yoshida back right before ARR launched, he said, you know, because we asked him about that kind of stuff. And he said, look, this is a game. We're developing it first on PC. Yes. And then we're mm -hmm. moving it to these other platforms. So we shouldn't have any of those issues. Right. Um, he had also, I think at that time, too, um, expressed an interest in making sure that they could keep the graphics current. Yes. Um, yeah. We've also and seen... so... It, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. In, in, in Japan, he's been writing columns for uh, Famitsu, um, and they've released books of, of all these columns, and there's been some fan translations on Reddit, which are really super interesting if you want to learn about, like, Yoshida's, like, thoughts on bidets and flying, and it's a thing. Um, but he does, he does is this, this one entry where he does talk a little bit about the idea of um, going through and updating the graphics, and the reality is, you know, this pipeline, the graphics pipeline for 14 is yeah. old. It's like two yes. generations behind, mm -hmm. but it also costs a crap ton of money if they want to do it. And it's just crap. not worth the investment right now. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, you know, it's it's PS or PC based. It, they could do it, but is that payoff going to be worth it? It's and that's where the risk yeah. comes in, and that's where I want to I want to kind of speak on a couple of things because as the engineer as well as can when I, we got to sit I down. Can I interrupt you really quick and get out? Oh, go ahead, please. I'm, I'm, I'm long winded. Please, um, I, I can go forever. Just we've already seen a president where when they feel they got to a point where where things are sort of even and they're moving yeah. their storyline all right, all right, they'll go back to that stuff that they know needs to be fixed and they will fix it. Mm -hmm. We've already seen yep. them do that, so yeah. it's mm -hmm. quite possible that. It's one small thing at a time. Well, and then there's also a big difference, right, between um, functionality versus, like, aesthetic, right? That's another mm -hmm. consideration because for, for a while, I you know, even after 14 and, and ARR had come out, I would jump into 11 every so often. I'm like, you know, this game doesn't look that bad still. Right. Um, I don't have that mindset as much these days, but, yeah. um, you know, there's there is that kind of, like, graceful aging period, right, that you can have with a game. But um, and it's, it's 14 is still more yeah. beautiful than almost anything out there currently. You're, you're, oh, it, they, they are they still ways buffer. away. Right. They are still ways away, but it's, you, you it's have to problem think. problem isn't visual. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, even on that, yeah. the graphics pipeline, like, yeah, like there's a lot of, that they could, they could make this game yeah. be the most, the most beautiful thing out there, but what's the cost, right? What's the actual time to. Yeah. How, to how, how, what kind of investment are we looking at to fix the grass is, is the question, right? <laughs> right. And then it, Right, but then remember the grass guys doing the grass. 
without doing that, they're already the number one MMO <laughs> ranks probably over the last decade. Yeah. Literally the only one that's ever been in the top and recommended by Metacritic because it's just universally praised. Their issue actually is more narrative than anything else. Not that the narrative is bad. The narrative is now proving to be a wall. Imagine going yeah. and have to watch six seasons of a show in order to go and do the content that you want to do. And they've answered that problem with jump potions. But ultimately, yeah. you see how the community doesn't necessarily accept that. You go like people are like, hey, should I use a jump potion? I go, sure. Just don't tell anybody uh, because there, like, there, there's also a narrative thing that you, you lose out on it. But skill up, we had we had skill up on the podcast. He went uh, and just yeah. do dove into it over almost 400 hours to go yep. and get all the way through it. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's the next expansion. Here's like at some point the narrative is a beautiful strength of the game. But for some people, it ultimately yeah. is actually a very difficult thing because you want to get, you want to appreciate, but then you're like, by the way, you're going to have to block off the next six months of your life. It's you it's interesting. Yeah. With when around the time of Shadowbringers, there was a, a few friends of mine that I know got into 14. Either they're getting back into it or they started fresh. Yeah. And it was really interesting watching them go through and then, you know, they get they get towards the end of ARR and they're like, oh, like this character is just cool. And it's like a picture of harsh font. And you're just like, hmm. <laughs> Well, see, that's one of the things, though, that I think is actually, and I mean, please, everybody can everybody can argue this with me as much as, as you want, because I think it's a really interesting discussion. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that has actually contributed to the rise of Final Fantasy XIV as one of our mm -hmm. current top MMOs. And it's funny because coming out of the precedent of MMO, um, like current MMO mindset, right? So we mm -hmm. saw WoW, which defined a massive field in the genre for so long. Mm -hmm. But now we're reaching the point where WoW's sort of structuring and system and precedent with, you know, storytelling is almost proving to be one of its downfalls in the mm -hmm. sense that, um, I mean, it set this precedent with, okay, well, you get in the game, what you need to be at is end game. So every single time a new expansion mm -hmm. is going to come out rush, because yeah, everybody rush, wants rush. to be in on that hype. And this is, I mean, it's not a bad idea because you are appealing to a certain demographic. You have people mm -hmm. coming in, they want to play with their friends. They want to immediately jump, like, jump into the story and get to the end game. They don't want to be hearing about what they're missing. They want to get in on that hype. So yeah. you market to that hype. But 14 did something that is completely backwards as of that mentality mm -hmm. and, um, that was derived from the Final Fantasy series that said, first and foremost, we are going to look at this as a standalone Final Fantasy game. Yeah. So the narrative is going to be the precedent. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, when they first come into the game, have problems with that. And, you know, some will just say, I don't want to play this because right. I, I can't. I hate story, honestly. It's just one right. thing I don't <laughs> like. So the jump potions were great for that. Um, but there are even more people who I think get into the game and then go, oh, my God like a narrative Yesterday. that it never expires. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. always like, I'm coming in for the first time and this story is compelling and it's interesting mm -hmm. and I can see all the details over years. It's not a mess of lore and retcons and issues. Like it's so consistently told. Mm -hmm. it's taking the idea of narrative storytelling to a long format version that we have just not necessarily seen in the genre. And then we get payoff like shadow bringers. Right. And yeah. Because of that, I think it is one of the greatest strengths. And whenever people ask me about should I skip or not skip, I'm like, don't skip. Don't no. skip. No. Like, <laughs> get your yourself, I'm like, get a level <laughs> potion if you want a level potion, because then sure. you can just blast yeah. through the old content. But like, don't skip the story because you're going to hit Shadowbringers and you're going to be like, I don't get why this is. Uh, people said this was good. You can even hit Shadowbringers <laughs> and still get a really great experience. Yeah, so sure. just as yeah. a kind of highlight, like, the, the uh, I mean, it's still a great story, but like, like Shadowbringers <laughs> is like the Avengers Endgame. Of the Final Fantasy <laughs> yeah. 14 storytelling. So like, that's really what it is. Yesterday, I, a friend yeah. of a friend was talking to the friend. I was I was an outside <laughs> okay. observer. Uh, but they were like, dude, this story. And we were all like, oh, did you finally get Shadowbringers? They're like, no, I just got to the end of ARR. And I'm like, oh, no, you got <laughs> you got stuff waiting for you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. you, are, you are in for a treat. Yeah. yeah. And it is, so, but the Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. This will be my last little, because I talked a lot there. Um, but <laughs> no, it is interesting because I think we're seeing a shift in trends for what sells an MMO. And people mm -hmm. are asking for narrative now. Even Black Desert Online is releasing Crimson Desert, which is a PVE story-focused version of Black mm -hmm. Desert. Yeah. And nice. so we're starting to see that that is a draw in and of itself for players and that that can sell. It's just a new trend in MMOs. Mm -hmm. So I think 14 was a little bit ahead of its time on that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Expanding it to new platforms and continuing that story, if they can keep it strong, I think will be a huge, a huge, you know, forward proofing, future proofing 
sort of thing for them. So one of the things that when we got to sit down and talk with Yoshi P out of the media tour, like from an engineering perspective, it's like the dev team's got the passion. It's a, it's mm-hmm. obviously a matter of priority. And what I, what I've said is that right now, when you look at just the fate system and how you have the bicolored gemstones that you get rewarded, but that doesn't exist anywhere else. you got the trust that exists, but that doesn't exist anywhere else. Uh, it's going to be a question of like, if we see that trickle backwards, the problem is, is that they it is a Jenga tower and that's why like they make a change to the fate. It's only in the newest expansion. It doesn't trickle yeah. down. It takes a lot more work to do so. So from an, an interest also in the development uh, and the resources, at some point you have to, you actually have to look at it and say like, when is the right time to either do a chapter two? And that has a kind of a new starting point, a new, like a way that they could, they could easily continue the story if they want to, honestly, I'm all in for the ride, whatever the team decides to do. Yeah. Um, but there is still that technical hurdle of you've got, um, that's why you don't see trusts and that's why you see squadrons and you have all these kind of different systems that kind of eventually yeah. led to it. Right. Uh, so it's going to, if they, if you ever see trust in ARR, that in and of itself, you know, I've always said is a love letter from Yoshi P and the dev team to the community, because that's not as simple as copy paste. Because yeah. if it was, it would be here already. That's going mm-hmm. to be something yeah. that they have to pour a ton amount of work into. And that's again why I default back to I think 5.3 as a entry point because mm-hmm. no matter what, people come in and, and um, I I love. We were all around for ARR. Uh, ARR was magical. It was this experience. We had no idea what was happening or what was coming. <laughs> it has set the standard, and in some ways, as a pair of golden handcuffs. Because I still look back and say. Man, remember when we got three dungeons like every patch? <laughs> remember when like we had all these different Back like well, yeah. and it's that the team is working on stuff. And the way and the and from an engineering perspective, mm-hmm. what really kind of was like, oh, either one of two things. They're working on something big, or there's a real big problem with this game. And it was yep. Eureka. And it's not that Eureka, like I liked what Eureka tried to do. It had me go play eleven because eleven was more fleshed out in terms of what they were trying to do, yeah. but it was delayed. You didn't really get the full experience of what they designed for Eureka until the third part. And yeah. it was also on an instance server. And the re- and when I look at the world visit system, I think that they're going to do something like that, that they're going to tap into the world visit system uh, and and basically have you world, like I was like, Eureka needs the, the party finder. Eureka would benefit if I was able to queue up for other things, you know, yeah. like especially PVP that has a 30 minute plus queue yeah. time. And I could still be out out in Eureka. Yeah. The, the like, idea of it being an instanced zone was it, it ended up ultimately not working out because you would get people. Oh, the zone's closed. Everybody leaves. Nobody wants to do anything else. Everybody yeah. rejoins. Or you try yeah. and if you're doing um, uh, Arsenal, you try and get people. In, it just it doesn't right. work. It was My- a they had to tech to do what they wanted to do. They had to kind of somewhat say, here's what we can do within the current architecture. But we're seeing a lot of that back end stuff change fundamentally. Right. And World Visit is a system that they could technically throw whatever like zones they wanted to in that. And honestly, I'm interested to see what we do with five two with Diadem, because if it ends up being a open world zone that kind of matches makes you into mm-hmm. it from with other people. That's what I could see where the benefit starts coming forward because it's designed as open world content. And you, the only way that's valuable is if you get people in the zone. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. where within the data center, that's like you, the risk is, is that you find somebody going and like, hey, I want to work on my relic. Oh, you got to transfer to Sargatanis for that because nobody on this server is going to do mm-hmm. it. And you're seeing that with the restri- uh, restoration of Ishgard and the different uh, you know changes that they that are there included. Yeah. So I would. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was say I would I would love I love everything you're saying. Everything, yes, because I would love to see Eureka was such a good testing grounds. I think mm-hmm. that was such yeah. an interesting new like I was sitting there going, Oh my gosh, this could be the answer for so many things. Um, if mm-hmm. we bring it out, like Baldessian Arsenal as an actual like open world, open dungeon content yes. that we could get. Right. These ideas of these like bigger picture end game varieties that we could get. Now we're getting stuff for crafters and gatherers. What if we had maps or zones that were just a part of everything that were almost closer to that Eureka style that had different interactive elements like this, like Baldessian Arsenal, right? Mm-hmm. Where you're coordinating with groups for these massive like map metas and you're trying to do this big thing in this dungeon. Like that mm-hmm. would be so fun. And that would give people some content that would 
make those open world zones a little more challenging, but also give you more payoff and reward for like interacting with them and exploring them and yeah. getting big groups together. I love that. And I'm hoping, thinking about how this all ties into like consoles, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm hoping that if we expand to more platforms, that does nothing except for show that there's more support for this game, which will then in turn generate more revenue, more interest, mm -hmm. more of a player base, which will then support development of even more content like this, right? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. maybe this time versus money issue becomes less of a problem because they're going, oh, we got the money, so let's invest back and make mm -hmm. all these things and launch all these things with bigger right. teams and you know more resources. Yeah. I think yeah, I think another issue, maybe not issue, right? But um, when you consider how long 14 has been operating and how long they've kept this consistent patch schedule, they experiment a little bit here and there, right? But I, you know, yeah. will they ever waver and say, okay, we're gonna try something way outside the box we're gonna you know instead of like here's this new thing it's eureka it's like one zone well you know if they just do something massive i don't know because it's, it's worked eureka really well for them though in that regards that gave them a lot of ability to experiment without breaking the raid scene you have a couple yes. different communities yeah. within the sure. game you've got the like the role-playing community and they have kind of their element you go like over to crystal i hear that like yeah people raid but ultimately like you have cultures that have been building around these different data mm -hmm. centers now and with Eureka, it gives them the ability to say, like, not piss off the rating community who's mm -hmm. going for world first and ultimates because the things they they can do over here, okay, well, you don't have logograms. You don't have that uh, mm -hmm. to, to break mm -hmm. uh, this fight itself. And same thing kind of with Blue Mage. You see them uh, kind of sprinkling in, um, mm -hmm. you know, the experimentation. And it, you know, it either works or it doesn't. And it's, I think I always call Eureka their, their public test server because it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, they're playing around with elementals again. They're... Yeah. Yeah. doing x it, y yeah. and z it was um, testing for horizontal progression that no i mean like why don't we have it it's because it's hard to do and balance in raid right because like kind of, what in yeah, five years in 10 years like yeah okay well you unlock this like five years ago in your god mode and everybody yeah. it's required so go <laughs> right. and do this epic right well and, and you know that's going back to the idea of it, of it being an instant zone i mean that's right now that's the biggest detriment to it is nobody's queuing up for eureka because it's it's yeah. well if true. it was leveling content oh, is it not true well you no. can go and kind of break some it people like, some people are still Patch doing groups friends, and stuff guess what people are doing there are uh, people doing eureka but here's the I... thing that is so infuriating about it being instanced <laughs> and it being instanced <laughs> but not not instance in the way that like our zones are when we have a new X pack release where you can choose yeah. between the instances yeah. so i just went back in in the past couple weeks to do eureka Mm -hmm. And I was so excited because I was like, oh man, it's, it's a little bit easier now. And they, you know, dealt with some of the issues that I had because I kind of fell off the train with um, Pyros and I was just like, I'm tired and I don't want to keep doing this. Yeah. And like, you know, it was tough. So I went yeah. back in to do it and I was actually having a good time. I it's was fun having content. fun. I was grouping up with people. It was, you know, like the zones weren't super flooded, but there were enough people that were doing notorious monsters that we'd have trains and things. I got to the point where I was like, this close to getting my final upgrade for the relic weapon and i was part of a hunt train and i was super pumped because i need like 250 more crystals and there's all these people in the instance for once and i was like this is amazing and then my time ran out on the mm -hmm. instance so i had to yeah. leave the instance and i'm sitting yeah. outside of it and i was like ah you know what i'll just queue back up and join and for the next hour it put me into an instance that had one person who was doing nothing for the entire hour and i was like <laughs> I was just on yeah. an instance that had 15 people in it and like they're out there and it is, you know, active, but I was like, why can I not just go back into mm -hmm. this instance? Like nobody here is doing notorious monsters. We just spent 40 minutes prepping Pazozo for this <laughs> zone and I can't get my panini on because I got kicked out from the timer <laughs> and it will not. Yeah. I can't. I was trying to get back into it, trying to get back into it. It would not instance me in. It mm. just kept putting me in this one person instance. Terrible. And that was really like, that made me just not want to. If I could, like, can if you I, please leave? Come back. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> if I could use Eureka as leveling content along with my roulettes and dungeons and things mm. like that, where it's mm. like, let me just go mm. grind on some mobs. I'm an 11 player. I actually enjoy it. Like, <laughs> right. you know, in a weird way, like yeah. let's get a group together and we're going to go party we're just going to go chain mobs and we're going to get experience not just within the system well, but also the outside like the world in lock boxes and get stuff out of it well not just yeah. the stuff but it's like from a leveling perspective like but, i, I mean, you, you know it, it's right yeah, yeah exactly sure. like give me more things that's one I, back to my original complaint with eureka is that 
Uh, if I had three hours, I, w- I loved it. But if I did, if I was like, oh, I only have an hour to play or whatever, uh, if I could get some progress through, you know, roulettes or something, even if it was 10 percent, 50 percent efficient, it doesn't have to be efficient. Mm-hmm. Just give me a little taste. So that way, like over the course of a month, yeah. I'm like, OK, cool. I'm not like, yeah. you know, forever, forever behind. But yeah. What y'all just illustrated, especially with the frustration there, is a technical thing. Like it's yeah. like yes. that is that how do they bring this in and they mm-hmm. use what technology they had because ARR never expected that Heaven's Word would exist. They were just trying to save the franchise <laughs> right. and relaunch it. And all of a sudden they're like, we did it. Okay, now we're going with Heaven's Word. And so there is this technical debt that the game mm-hmm. has had. Mm -hmm. And that's where, and this is going to drive the the conversation into the next category here, when we talk PS5 and Xbox Scarlet, uh, you know, as it comes to consoles, honestly, I think that, yeah, you bring it to to Xbox One X uh, or X, um, and then you bring it, you know, it's on PS4, and then it's forward compatible, and maybe they Mm -hmm. do a graphical thing because it is PC-based, but... Yoshi P has said that they've been working on a project since 2016. It's in, it just it came out of pre-production last year. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's happening next year. I think, you know, you know, but Final Fantasy 14's 10 years. It's been out for 10 years uh, next year, right? It's been nine years right now. Like if you count 1.0, sure. yeah. yeah. You go, you add a, you add four more years to that. You're talking about a 14, 15 year lifespan on this one game itself, having a way that it can say, here's the preserving of that. Mm-hmm. And then whatever this new project he's working on whether it's a brand new MMO, brand new story, brand new world, that's cool. Or if it's some form of like, hey, you save the world and you've done the rejoining, or you did all of it's here. Yeah. And then <laughs> guess what? A thousand years later, like mm-hmm. what's happened, you know, like we're 10,000 years later in some way we're connected, but also at the same time, a it's, a new, it's a new starting point. You know, so, I don't know. Um, I, I think that from a technical perspective, if they go and fix that, um, it is a love letter to, to the community because it isn't right. the easiest work. It's easier no, to start over um, to a degree, you know, and yeah. really the, the, the question, I think when, when talking about Eureka and the idea of instances and stuff. So I, I the idea of taking it out of the duty finder, making it, you know, when we have an expansion, you have, you know, one, two, three, the problem with that is how many people can be in the zone, how many people mm-hmm. want to be doing this content you know, you're going to have one, two, three, like 50 or something. It's right. it's going to be weird. It would need to be able to actively add those. And it's it's that system architecture that they have where they're, it's it's still an MMO. It does a lot of great MMO things, but um, just the way that they, the, the zones work and stuff, it's there's definitely some technical limitations I, there. I right. still think that over the course of this expansion, we're going to see them introduce a zone that's actually match made. That is just a, like you just go and zone into it yeah. And it's going to take anybody from the data center and put them on there. And then it's going to try to load balance based off of that. You know, we've already seen teleport mm-hmm. to instance uh, in that regards. And so I, I honestly think that that's the kind of zone that we'll see. And it won't be worldwide. You'll still have server identity. Right. And I think that I'm curious. And that's, that's not a bad thought. Side. I mean, because you think about World Visit, it was something that came out pre-expansion because they want, they wanted to make sure that it worked it's before the test. expansion. Yeah. They could say, we have this really great idea. It probably won't happen until 5.2, 5.3, but we right. need to make sure that we can do it. Right. Mm-hmm. There you and go. That's, and that's where that's where when we see the live letter, you know, this this Friday the 13th mm-hmm. here, it'll be, I'm really curious to see if they're like, hey, by the way, it's going to, you know, that, that's how we're going to do Diadem. Mm-hmm. Diadem is a unique case because they're just tooling it up for gathering. Yeah. Um, but I always kind of thought the same thing. I really enjoyed the diadem itself as a zone. And I was like, well, if I could level in it, it'd be, mm-hmm. it'd be content that was, that was current. Like you just let me zone in. And then, you know, it's, especially Eureka being its own progression. Like who cares? Like what level you are, you go in, you've got your skills, go fight some monsters, have a good day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. really curious to see what they do with it. Mm-hmm. I, so I don't have a huge technical knowledge behind sure. me, um, but I'm curious if anybody thinks that with this transitioning to more consoles, you know, a greater diversity of consoles. And I mean, who knows, like if we, if we end up on Xbox, you know, is it even going to end up later on other, you know, other consoles or other types? We've sort of talked about that with Stadia and everything Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with that, with the players that come in with the different sort of consoles that will be dealt with. I mean, do you think that that will affect anything for us, like technically in the game? Will will having those players cause you know um, further issues with kinds mm-hmm. of content that are you know instance like this? Do we think they're going to have to put in more structures to sort of so so I, ultimately it's it's not going to have that huge of an impact. But what will be something that's that's considered is the same kind of thing where when they start to 
make zones bigger or you know that was right. the issue with ps3 when heaven's word came out because going around some of those big zones and NPC, NPCs would take a minute to load yeah, sometimes yeah. because mm-hmm. you're going through this area so quick and so at some point there will be a technical barrier yes. um and it's it's a combination of you know the technology versus what the game is doing and what the devs want it to be able to do mm-hmm. um and there's definitely there's there's a fine line there where you know, we don't know what the next PS4 limitation is going to be, right? We have no idea what it could be. Um, but I think I think system-wise right now, there shouldn't be any issues um, that are going to be, you know, handicapping or crippling consoles when they, they get the game. Um, I think you're going to look at culture more than anything else because with Xbox sure. players... Um, that could that will bring in a different culture, just like when BFA failed and we brought it in the Final Fantasy XIV yeah, grew while. heavily yeah. via WoW. WoW players aren't generally toxic. Toxic people no. are toxic. It doesn't matter right. what mm-hmm. game you're playing. Like they're they're we, you guys in your last podcast talked about fourteen toxic players. You know yeah. that mindset. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, you know, and so ultimately, like, yeah, toxic players are going to be toxic. I think there's going to be kind of a kind of a fear because it's like, wait a minute, like. Um, these walls are being broken down and 14 yes, exactly. is leading the charge. We've seen Fortnite now also lead that charge and that's yes. helped out a lot with its popularity. Mm-hmm. Uh, consoles and how we think of them as uh, as kind of like, you know, millennials and you know, Gen Zs or whoever, I don't know what, how, what range. Whatever, whatever the heck you people are these days. <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever people are these days. Um, <laughs> like what, you know, for those of us who grew up playing Super Nintendo and Genesis yeah. and things like that, like it was a, it was a line in the sand. It was something right. that you had ownership of. Uh, we'll see that less and less and less. And honestly, yeah, that, that, that tide is coming in and that line in the sand is getting thinner and thinner. And it garden. needs to be yeah. because when these companies are, are no longer competing over exclusives and locking you into a platform, they got to compete for services and, and, uh, and mm-hmm. that, and, and gamers win in that regards. Um, but th- I mean, there's going to be some growing pains over the next 10, 15 years. Uh, Xbox sure. players coming in, I think financially help benefit the game. Um, yeah. Will we see an immediate response on that? That's not how business works. A lot of people think like, oh, you made money. It's like you, you look at an ROI, yeah. you look at like a five year and 10 year plan and spending. You don't go and ideally, if you're smart, which I would say Square Enix is and Yoshi right. P's got a good head of. And, and speaking of that, now, like anyway. to praise Yoshi P, to praise, to praise yeah. the, like he fought and said, no, this game's not coming on Xbox if it's going to be on separate servers. Originally, Xbox, mm-hmm. the reason why right. it's not on yeah. Xbox is because the old leadership of Xbox had their head in the sand. Uh, Phil Spencer, I'm a big fan of, and mm-hmm. he's really changed the culture, just like Yoshi P's <laughs> changed culture of Square Enix. But Yoshi P said, no, we're not going to divide the community so Xbox players can play on their own server. This is a financial loss. Like yes. you, Square Enix is a publicly traded company. This was a fight. And he fought, and he and he and he did a he did a good service to the community of fourteen because he saw where where the road was going. He was thinking, you know, he was thinking for the future, and that's mm-hmm. where we'll see that with more and more games, yeah. ultimately. And that's I think better for gamers. There is still going to be a transition. People, and anytime I talk about this, ultimately there are people who are afraid. Uh, they're afraid right. because it is an unknown thing. We haven't seen it that much, but we're starting to see it more and more. And um, yeah, there's going to be growing pains, but I think uh, I think because of the fact that Xbox runs on, on Windows, uh, the biggest conversion would be yep. uh, for Stadia because Stadia is a Linux based back right. then, I believe, mm. when I talked to the devs. Yeah. Um, it so is, it's yeah. that. Yeah. And it ultimately means that 14, if it comes to Stadia, maybe 14 comes to Linux. And, <laughs> oh, yeah, I well, well, and, and you know, in that, in that <laughs> regard, too, I mean, we already have uh, Marvel's Avengers is going to be coming out on uh, on Stadia. So Square yes. Enix will have some experience with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, thinking back to. Yeah, uh, yeah, to, to Square's there. credit too. Over the last maybe five or ten years, there's been a lot of forward thinking at Square. I mean, back when Yuichi Wada was CEO, he said, you know, the future is streaming. Yeah. Um, they had anybody remember Project Flare? Like that was a thing for mm. yeah. two years before it they stopped something. it. Yeah, <laughs> but they had they had they. I mean, they had a, a the the Shinra Inc. like company running for a little while, mm. doing you know a lot of like cloud research and stuff like that. Like they they have a good many good heads on the on the shoulders over there and right. you know that's it's something that they're always working here's thinking the real, about here's the real business kicker in my opinion um right now google is a threat to the industry like in their regards they are a billion dollar they've invested two billion plus dollars yeah. into the stadium uh you look at playstation sony nintendo kind of the old you know the old hat um Guard, sony yeah. has teamed up with microsoft they're, they're in partnership uh, because yes. microsoft's got the azure back end and i as an engineer who works with it it's effing impressive 
Uh, <laughs> you know, and so it's like X Cloud whenever whenever it is launched, it's going to be a real good competitor to Stadia in that regards. So a lot of this actually more has to do with India and a lot of the emerging markets on mm -hmm. uh, with internet. But without going into uh, like that as a that's its own topic. Um, but with that, you see Sony and Microsoft teaming up. Why? Because Google's coming on the scene. Yeah. Like okay, I I guarantee you. There is some probably like, yeah, you're researching. Listen, we figured it out. Let me light. Let's make a deal, right? Yes. We want mm -hmm. these IPs. We we have a very hard lacking, but we can we can provide you a back end uh, for this. We can help, you know, reduce your costs because every time a, a PlayStation game sold, every time anything from PlayStation sells, Microsoft makes money. PlayStation's built on Microsoft, yeah, <laughs> you know, like uh, no, 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 Studio, no. things like that. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's all business at the end of the day. They, 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 there's competition, but there's also a lot of collaboration. Mm -hmm. With that, I bet, honestly, that both Microsoft and Google are running hard at Nintendo, because I doubt Nintendo is going to be building any kind of cloud backend, nor would I want them to, considering the Wi-Fi on the Switch is utter junk. I was, uh, I was about to say, please But, you know, on that, on that regard, you're going to start online. to see a lot more collaboration within these companies, because the future is streaming, and while the infrastructure isn't here, it's hard for people to visualize it. Once you go hands-on, you realize I can have a high-end PC experience for mm -hmm. pennies on the dollar. You know, there's still going to be the people who go and want to buy hardware and, and spend five thousand yeah, plus more. But ultimately, you know, when we when we start talking about you know, <laughs> fifteen and twenty and, and fifty years, like yeah. it's going to be it's it's going to shift, and it, it makes sense. And that's why these companies are investing in it, and that's why. Uh, Square Enix, like honestly, they're they, they you got to be thinking 10, 15, 20 years down the line, yeah. unless you if you want to still be in business. Blockbuster used to be a thing, and I studied <laughs> yeah. them in college. There was yeah. a case study about how future thinking yeah. they were, uh -huh. and then they completely let Netflix come in because they you go and look at what it was, they were like, This isn't a thing, so they went against their original disruptive yeah. nature. So, yeah, yeah, well, we it, it's mm -hmm. oh, I say we've talked a bit about um, this earlier the idea of almost revenue models, right? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, right. if if we have the game now, right? And the game goes to a platform like Xbox and we're going, do you need gold for this? Or do you need to have, or, you know, we're talking PlayStation, you know, with PlayStation, do you need to have this online capability? That's such a thing. And with the idea of streaming services, even, you know, if we see 14 ever moved to something that is almost more like a Netflix model, right? Where you're going, I subscribe at this point to get mm -hmm. this catalog of games, do, do we think, and does everybody here think, I'm curious to hear what your sort of ideal model for for the cost of 14 would be in the future with some of this stuff? You know, would it be the kind of thing where we no longer pay for a base game and we instead are just like paying some kind of monthly subscription mm -hmm. fee? Is it the kind of thing where there's no subscription fee and, you know, you're just paying for your internet capabilities? It's, I'm wondering how these different things will affect us as players and the costs that we are putting into the game when you have all these different sort of systems in place on different platforms mm -hmm. for how they charge you for that internet mm -hmm. play that you know the mmo the co-op the whatever it is do we think that'll affect 14 or do we think it'll still say something that's separated across each platform where if you're on console yeah maybe you have to pay to be able to use the internet and pay your sub and pay well and that's you know that's diving into the, the stuff from years ago where you know you might have had to pay an extra five dollars a month on your internet package for youtube or you know like that that's like that's a huge giant topic but i think ultimately there's always going to be at least one fee uh, if not multiple because you're going to have depends on where you play it right if you're playing it on on a computer um, obviously you're going to have to have internet like that cost is going to be attributed regardless. So mm -hmm. that's one. Then you're going to have to likely buy the game or pay a subscription to the game. If you're on console, you'll you may have to pay a service for that. So you're, you're looking at at least two guaranteed uh, types of payments. You know, even if, if we talked about the idea of um, 14 on game pass, that's still another cost on top of your internet. So there's always going to be at least two fees associated with this. The subscription model for individual games is dead and it's going to go away really quick. Um, yeah. We've seen this already. And so you're starting to see it with WoW because the subscription is covering multiple. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, is whether or not Square Enix is going to actually have a publisher subscription. I kind of don't think so. Uh, mm -hmm. They could eventually go that, but they, at this last E3, they talked about, yeah, they're going to start considering thinking about mm -hmm. it. And it's that was like, OK, like if you haven't been already having that conversation, their partnership with Microsoft and Game Pass actually makes a lot more sense. I can see them mm -hmm. making similar deals. You can start to see uh, like subscription services 
uh, ultimately somewhat come together like the Netflix and the Disney Plus uh, models, et cetera, because content is going to be king. Uh, and it's the question is, is does Square Enix spend the money to invest in it for just their IP alone? Yes or no. The other factor here is also a subscription saturation, just like Fusion was talking about. We've yes. got your internet subscription, you got your Netflix subscription. At some point, we're going to start to see almost the cable company package come back into play. I was going like, to say that. It's I'm just going to well, buy and, this and, and, and that's, get that's, all away from that. that. And now we're moving back into it. That's, and that's like right. It. I mean, that's on top of everything else. I mean, as as a yeah. as like a somebody that works freelance on manga, like I'm paying internet, I'm paying Adobe, I'm paying Frickin Microsoft Adobe. Office. Like yeah. Adobe <laughs> is so expensive, it's almost not worth it to have the job. Yeah, yeah, it's it's annoying, it, it, and there's there's so many. You anyway, that's, a, that's raise your rates because that's fifty dollars a month. If it's not worth it, like you better yeah, be writing that off in your it's, taxes. It's too. interesting though, talking about the idea of of you know a Square Enix games thing. Um, this this makes me think back to when when fourteen first came out. They had a a bundle subscription for eleven and fourteen. Yep, right. And it didn't run for that long. I know that and was it, the weirdest thing. It makes you wonder mm -hmm. why haven't they revisited that? If if anybody's going to the the fan mm -hmm. gathering out in Boston in February, ask ask what's up with that. Maybe they yeah. can give you. A, and probably not, but. Yeah, I, I, I honestly hope that we see with uh, what we call mobile. You know, it's listed as Final Fantasy eleven R mm -hmm. now over on uh, on R two. R2. R2, R squared. Yeah. Um, and I ultimately hope that means that when we look at what Fortnite did for the industry and how you have this game that's mobile, that's console, that's PC, that, mm, and yeah. then you opt in and out of crossplay because it's a competitive yeah. game. Like, I honestly would love to see that for 11 to see them say, That'd be great. Like, you know, yeah. hey, we're going to remaster it. And when yeah. when I go and I was like, uh, you know, when my, when my friend says, I can't play this game on my 4K monitor, I go, yeah, like they would, it would really, I think there would be. People who can't would come back to 11 if it was just streamlined, not all the QOL, but you just streamline just it's like here's it's installed. Here's how I can mm -hmm. play. I can use yeah. the UI and it's not, you know, itty bitty. Yeah. And I can't. See well, and, I, and I've been saying since day one, you know, when they announced this, they're like, yeah, it's going to be on mobile. It's developed by Nexon and it's built mm -hmm. on Unreal. So why the That's hell isn't it on PC? Not. That is the difference. Come on. That is why 11 <laughs> and 14 can't do Fortnite. They can't. And I don't think Square Enix has the engineering to do so. That that having been said, yeah, they've been quiet on Eleven Mobile for so long that's, for a reason. They've yes. been working on it a and that's lot. The future and that's the future thing about like when I, you start like when you started the project originally. Mm -hmm. But and the, and that's where cloud gaming changes the entire conversation right. completely. Mm -hmm. MMO specifically, I know a lot of people are like, I, I don't. I, I would. I would. Say yes Please, if it wasn't the fact that this is a mobile game going to be that's going to be reliant on data plans. Right. That's the, now, there was a lawsuit to, yeah. to Sony over the Vita for that kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. it's just it's not feasible and it won't be feasible for even longer than that infrastructure right. well, yeah. from Stadia Imagine that we're talking though, about. Imagine you're not talking about a mobile client anymore. Imagine that you are only building one one version of the game mm -hmm. that gets streamed up to any okay. platform okay. that you can right. that right. you can deal. See, now, that, that's, a, that's, that's a that's better be scenario. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be eleven because yeah. I'm still saying like when we talk about that it, I'm nice. talking about <laughs> mass mass adoption is still a decade mm -hmm. away. Um, so but beyond that though, MMO specifically would benefit because yeah. imagine a world when you never have to hear console limitations as a reason for mm -hmm. anything that you can't have. Right. It's literally oh. We upgraded the servers and everybody can now run this new, the newest technology. What did it cost you? Nothing, because you're already a part of this service in that regards. MMO specifically mm. yes. uh, have that have an easier transition for people mm. to get over that because you sure. already have to be online to play this game, which was originally kind of frustrating for players like I don't want you know etc. Um, so consoles and games and things like that we, are, are going to benefit because. The, the technology backbone, the thing behind it is that if they're not going to do it, it's because they're they're not willing to upgrade the hardware, um, mm -hmm. that, and that you don't have to then upgrade. It's just you know, but that's we're we're still a while away. But I think MMO is like when we talk about eleven and all that. It's like, my goodness, like if they do decide to remaster it and mm -hmm. then repackage it, bring it back to consoles, uh, you know, why why not have it as a, either a part of a baked in subscription mm -hmm. that you're just like you're paying. It, uh, I almost think it would need to be. If, if yeah, only yeah. to yeah. keep the player base still going for the other game, right? Classic and retail. Like you go look at them. Yes. It's it, it gives them more value to that. And they already have the cash shop, which 14 already has as well. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you already have a way of generating additional revenue, but you, you have that, like imagine saying, I'm not going to cancel my subscription because I'm afraid of losing my house. 
I'm not going to cancel my subscription because yeah. I'm going to go play this other game for a little bit. And, and you know, in, in yeah. that regard, I'm wondering if that's why we don't have that joint subscription right now because they want Eleven to die, right? Like they're working <laughs> they're on this new version. That, they, they have. have four, somebody, yeah, I was they trying have. to think of a nice way to say it. Like you know, 14 <laughs> came out, and then it was 1.0, and we know what 1.0 did, and they went, oh. Uh, here's Seekers of Adelin, <laughs> so, and people are still playing it. They're, they, you know, it's it's you okay. We're gonna, them, you have to give them a place to go. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna this. end the story, and then people are still sub. People are still playing, and, and it's, it's growing. Like, yeah, so and thanks, Ninja. In terms of MMOs uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and games that are episodic in a way, uh, things mm -hmm. that you would yeah. consistently come back and subscribe to. What kind of system would you need for a game that's basically like a one 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 time they make it's so a, a single player game will benefit from cloud computing uh, by just actually freeing developers to create what they want every time there's okay. a generation every time you you go watch the any presentation of xbox or playstation and they'll ask a dev like how much do you want do you want 32 mm -hmm. gigs do you want you want 64 yeah. gigs of ram you want and they'll say I want as much as you could absolutely give me hands down every time and Space that's what aside, though like, like sure uh, being able to pay everyone if everything is under a subscription thing right that's oh. how, how, how is that like i don't know how that money's yeah. distributed yeah how, at all how, because how like is oh the, 90 90 percent of people right 90 percent of people yeah. are playing wow classic and then maybe well, like boy do, do do we fund classic more like that's always that's always the huge yeah. question and 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 to some regard especially right now with xbox game pass i mean because we've we talked a little bit about how you know they have been doing great and so mm -hmm. they're saying okay we need to do something new um i just subbed today three months of xbox yeah. live gold ultimate or whatever they call yeah. it ultimate, mm -hmm. yeah. one dollar one dollar yep. and with that i get like brand new titles yes like I microsoft give an example uh, uh, yeah how's the money like, <laughs> uh, like origin like ea i am subscribed to it because yeah. i i Personally, and this is this is me. I have I have to play Madden, and I don't know why. I just do. But because of that, I played Jedi Fallen Order, and I wouldn't. Yes. Have, I wouldn't have bought that. That's the and, only. Re I, yeah, I am planning like, a future one month amazing. subscription just yeah. to play that game. Exactly. And it's, that's you know that's another great you know thought too. Is again like we already mentioned Blockbuster, right? Um, yeah. The idea of wanting that is coming back, but it's all digital. That's but what how it is. How much of it's, that money goes back to that specific back. game? Right. Well. Well, that, this is a discussion is a that I yeah. think yeah. is so huge, though, because there's already a big discussion right now about the cost of a even a single player game. Right. right. So mm -hmm. we're talking mm -hmm. like $60 average for a single player game. There is so much discussion right now about whether or not that's even really like an appropriate amount. Right. You know, sure. is that too much? Is it not enough with the idea of DLC being a thing now where yeah. you have no idea? Are you going to? pay $30 for a DLC in addition to this game that's the real ending of this game? Or are you going to pay, you know, $30 for a DLC that ends up being a single dungeon and you're like, what? Right. Are you going to pay, like, this idea of what we are willing to pay for games, what mm -hmm. we think is, you know, a fair price, and then what is actually going to pay the devs that make these games. And with MMOs in particular, I mean, there are so many costs that go into that. Right. It is yeah. a massive and ongoing expense. So the idea of having these like subscription services or these cloud services or these things that are letting people play or even like a bundled thing between mm -hmm. 11 and 14. I mean, it, the idea of, yes, how do we make sure that we're paying the right amount, but that it's enough to support this game. Mm -hmm. It's hard to figure out exactly where that falls. Right. It falls in, price in terms of, 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 of volume, yeah. you know, and subscriber base, yeah. right? Because it's that imagine now if you're sitting here saying, hey, we've combined we've combined this for people who are sub to already both. There's going to be a financial like loss because it's like I was paying yeah. you know, this yeah. this game and this to this game. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, if it ends up being uh, it's the value proposition, which essentially brings more people in. So more people, you can lower the cost. And then that's a big a big thing. Um, yes. You yeah. know, seeing seeing like big uh, like digital storefront sales right you know mm -hmm. you can get this game for like 10 cents or something they make a killing because it's a 10 cent game and they can make more than they would selling it at the normal price yeah the market will ultimately yeah. decide what works and what doesn't work and if it doesn't yeah. ultimately work for the devs you'll see them being brought more in house by publishers and, and, and forming yes. different groups to help basically essentially it's called just mitigation of risk in terms yeah. of that revenue I just cycle hope that people are keep like looking forward like you said and keeping a really like tight belt well, on this and 
I don't want to see uh, yeah. studios go under because of all of the subscriptions. It's it's really wild it's, because it's the opposite though. It's the opposite. Okay. I pay EA. EA pays respawn. When I give EA money, they give respawn money. So that's why these platforms are publisher locked right now. There's you play. As long as you have enough people Oregon. doing it though. Right. Well, right. even yeah. even if you don't, I mean, those are people who they've subscribed for a month for this game and then they forget. Or another game comes out. Well, I'll just keep subscribing. I've been subscribed to this thing since sure. I don't even know a year or. Four, well, if you were doing Anthem it without buying it, yeah. like there you have that, and yeah, it's, yeah. but the, it's the same kind of thing. Like people will sure they'll go sub to HBO, whatever, or Netflix yes. for a little bit, and they'll come, and they'll leave, and they'll come back, and they're they're you know they're yeah. kind of migratory in that regards. But they come back, and then they have the the value in and of it. So it's like that's right. where I say like the individual subscription to an individual game. I don't even think that the cost. Is, is, is appropriate. I think when you go look at inflation, 14 bucks a month isn't a really a value or enough for uh, an MMO anyway. And so sure, you bring in the cash shops. So they'll find other also ways to monetize mm -hmm. individual games. Mm -hmm. And we'll still, we'll see, you know, unfortunately, as much as people are going to bemoan it, like we'll see more microtransactions individualized yes. to the individual game mm -hmm. uh, for cosmetics and whatnot. And, but you're a part of the service. Same thing, like you look at Gears 5. I went in and just loved it. I, I'm a big Gears, Gears, Gears fan, played mm -hmm. it subscribed as a part of ultimate don't need to individually buy the game and then they also have microtransactions in which that you can yeah. decide to optionally purchase on top it, of you yeah. know the question yeah. will all, go ahead oh i was gonna say i mean the microtransactions thing is it's so accurate i think and it's funny because right now i mean we're talking about the cost of games but, but microtransactions are also a huge point of contention yes. in different communities yeah. But Aldino, you know, I think you hit the nail on the head with that story about your experience and the idea that like, especially with MMOs, the idea that somebody is gonna be subscribed to just one MMO and refuse to play anything else. Like, while I'm sure there are players out sure. there who do, mm -hmm. MMOs as a genre have become such a genre. Like it's a huge thing. And we're seeing the market get flooded with all kinds of games from single players now to MMOs. Whereas for a long time, the options were a little bit more limited because a lot of people were thinking MMOs are on the decline. There's no money to be made out of them. And now mm -hmm. we're seeing almost this uptick in just interest. People want these long form games mm -hmm. they can play. They want to socialize. They want to make friends. They want co-op. They want multiplayer. They want MMOs. They want these things. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing more and more games kind of flood the market with that. And with the idea of expanding to platforms, again, like we're going to different consoles, those create more barriers to create more mm -hmm. divisions within your player base. Mm -hmm. But if you're tearing those down and you're saying something like, yeah, okay, well, maybe our old subscription model is outdated. People don't want to sub individually to each game. So on these publisher platforms, we're doing some kind of publisher thing. And then because you're on that, you discover Jedi, you know, Fallen Order. You discover mm -hmm. some game. And the idea is that you just need to get people in the door to try a game. And then if they love that game, they are going to support it in other means. So things like those microtransactions, they're going to, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and of course, yeah. there's always that debate about pay to win versus, you know, sure. oh, yeah. just cosmetics and stuff like that. Die. Well, yeah. it's, yeah. it's not, yeah. it's, people like to, I think they, they like to sit here and simplify it in that regards. The market decides, like, if you put a pay to win mechanic and people don't pay to win, your game's going to die. It's like, people are spending money on that. And I don't like it and I don't support those kind yeah. of games. Mm -hmm. And so I move on. The other factor beyond just microtransactions is also earned media. Uh, the ability for streamers and content creators right. uh, to sit here and, and produce like a, a lot of content around a lot of different games uh, mm -hmm. for a very like low uh, cost to them, sure, gets yeah. more people engaged. The, you know, so somebody coming in and playing Star Wars Free because they're subscribed and yeah. They're, yeah. They're, on, they're streaming yeah. it and now all of a sudden there's more interest that gets more subscribers and vice versa. I mean, and, that, that, that's Fortnite in a nutshell right there. It's that yes. you want to play with a bunch of people, you can stream it, it's free, and then there's microtransactions. That's mm -hmm. that's yeah. why Fortnite is so successful right there. And oh, well, that and also because kids bully each other, calling them defaults. And I mean, uh, and yeah, parents exactly. link their credit cards <laughs> yeah. to this accounts. Like literally parents, don't link, yeah. link your credit cards to these systems <laughs> and you will save yourself hundreds and right. hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Keep it, the credit cards in the safe with all the alcohol. Just yeah. lock it all up. <laughs> I think that's a big thing, like with us talking about, you know, okay, well, if Fortune expands to these platforms mm -hmm. right. and if the subscription model is dead, right? So then we're working underneath all these different consoles, mm -hmm. we're working underneath all these different subscription services, or maybe we're doing a publisher service or we're doing, you know, whatever it is. So we get rid of 
that subscription cost, I think it does open the door for, I mean, those cash shops to be more active for better and for worse, right? Mm -hmm. Like right. Yeah. when I'm looking at it myself and I'm going, okay, 14, right? I pay my 14 bucks a month and you know, Ryan, you were saying, is that really, you know, really a, a cost effective thing? Who knows, right? But I can say that- like, they, they make money, player, but it's like- Yeah, oh, but like yeah. from a player experience, I will say this. I look at Final Fantasy 14 and compared to the other MMOs that I play, because I play a ton of them, mm -hmm. for $14 a month, I get pretty much all the new gear that is put in the game, and there's a bunch of it, all the housing mm -hmm. items. I can get a house in the game for the in-game currency. I can do all of this stuff. I always know what the schedule of content release mm -hmm. is gonna be. I always yep. know they're so clear about that, and it's a mm -hmm. steady, ongoing thing. Then I compare that to something like Elder Scrolls Online. <laughs> yeah. And I, <laughs> Here's the deal. Like yeah. I love ESO and it's fun and not everybody loves it. It's kind of, sure. it, it seems like it has more of a, like you have to have the taste for ESO. If you don't, mm -hmm. you're probably gonna hate it, right? But in ESO, I pay a monthly subscription for plus because I don't have a crafting inventory unless I pay for that monthly subscription. Right. And the monthly subscription does have some good value because I get in-game store currency and things like that and all that good stuff as well each month. But I have found that in ESO, even with all that other stuff, I will spend hundreds of dollars if I'm not careful in their cash shop yeah. because they mm -hmm. have loot crates, because the houses that you can buy in the game cost you over a hundred real dollars if you buy yeah. like this, the nice ones. From this the was store. a conversation um, <laughs> that they had. It was a, a Final Fantasy 14 1.0 interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going back, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the things that I keep in my memory are ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but it was it was an interview with with again uh, Hiromichi Tanaka and I think um, the other director at the time um, Kom Komoto I don't remember but they asked them about the subscription model right because mm -hmm. this is you know back in what 2000. 10 2011 ish mm -hmm. right. and microtransactions were kind of a new big emerging thing mm -hmm. and they're like so are we doing microtransactions and they said no even though microtransactions would provide overall more income, mm -hmm. it wasn't a reliable revenue stream. Right. And that's the, subscription that's model the, the thing. fairest model in my mind. Right. That's why I really, it's right. disappointing. It was so universally rejected. Um, right. I was just like the player. It, it's even, like, even if you have people in and out, you know, they come in and they, they binge watch patch 5.1 and then they yeah. un unsub, which is something Yoshida's like, do it. Sure. Like that's, it. that's what we're here for. Like, um, you know, he, he really knows You'll what's up back. and it's, <laughs> I mean, we've all, we've all played MMOs for years, right? Yeah. And we've all had those friends who are like, well, that looks good, but I'm not paying a subscription fee. Exactly. Yeah. Cue them having Netflix and Disney plus and Hulu. <laughs> but the it, dollar per hour. The well, I mean, to be fair, 14 yeah. does not have baby Yoda. That's true. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. That's what they need to do. They, they just need to introduce baby Yoda to 14 and we're good. And that's like, why I don't know if, if it comes and it's a part of like Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, yeah. if it yeah. actually covers the subscription or if they decide to do some in-game extras mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, honestly, I'm really interested to see what ultimately happens. It's going to be very telling, right? right? Because if all of a sudden 14 subscriptions covered by Ultimate, that brings in a ton well, of people. Even yeah. even if they don't, um, they could still give you like the base game or something, right? They're like, right, here's sure. like hundred percent, or, or a, you know, some new type of like limited play thing. Imagine you if Game ARR... Pass, you can play for like three months or something, mm -hmm. and then you well, have to pay. I've, I've, I've advocated kind of for a different model within fourteen for a while, meaning like when you look at ARR and the free trial, free trial mm -hmm. unlimited, cuts you off at thirty five. Like, why can't you just hide the base game and maybe not have access to retainers but still play it whenever you want like log in and have access to like you're never going to be current but you're not mm -hmm. going to be cut off because there's plenty of people i think would love to go run around arr sure the economy though is the tricky thing yeah right. you, can't, you the, can't mess up the economy but you can go kill right. some nut if you, if you, can, you can purchase things but you can't trade and you can't uh, yeah. You can't sell, and, you can't but, yeah. and then you, you also can't be a part of Heaven's Word. Exactly. You can't be a part of Stormblood, and you can't be a part of Shadowbringers. <laughs> and then maybe when six point zero launches, maybe then oh, Heaven's Word's included. Could, I, I could like just that. imagine these talks with with Yoshida San and, and Phil Spencer, where it's like, <laughs> all right, fine, we'll let you do the crossplay, but 
<laughs> we, we want a, a Game Pass Ultimate version that uh-huh. you can still play with everybody. That's fine. But, like, it won't be the full game. So, like, you're going to have to go in your shoes just like, all right, fine. If that's what it well, takes, I, we'll I, let I, people not trade for to level 50 or, yeah. Yeah, I still, Whatever. I would say yes. that the, the business dealing on the back end is literally like, okay, we'll give us access to Azure Cloud and Cloud yeah. Compute and do all this other stuff. And it's like <laughs> business to business, like we're good. You know, yeah. so it's like maybe it's not directly coming into the budget itself, but all of a well, sudden. And, and you know, I'm curious too, if, if all the other Final Fantasy stuff on Game Pass factored into, you know, it was probably sure. this huge thing. You know, it probably wasn't just, you if know, Phil one Spencer's day. And, helping to fund 11 remake to be able to come back to consoles, man. Like I tell you, it, I mean, it, it, <laughs> yeah, there's more to it. It wasn't like they just got together one day and they're like, you know what? This is stupid. I agree. Yeah. This is stupid. Bring it on over. <laughs> Do whatever you want. I mean, it's it like, was, there's definitely more to it. Yeah. Jeff Bezos from Amazon saw the expanse, the show. And he was like, I love this. I love the book series. And then the show got canceled on sci-fi. And he was like, well, just Amazon's going to take it. And he just <laughs> took it. Literally, that's why they're still the expanse. Like, I mean, it's not crazy to think that these people, you know, at the heads here want these things to interact. They try, you know, like, yeah, Yeah. of course they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So who knows? And and at some point, too, if you're a Final Fantasy 14 player on top of your internet connection, on top of your Mm -hmm. subscription, you'll probably end up subbing up to like Netflix or something whenever they get the Final Fantasy 14 TV show worked out. Yeah. So (laughs) they're still working on that, too. Absolutely. (laughs) I don't think it's been yeah. picked up by Netflix, though. I think there's it. Still- it hasn't. It hasn't yet. Yeah. But it probably. I, probably you know, I feel like Netflix, like they're, the streaming services yeah. aren't going to compete for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, I yeah. mean, Disney has relations with Square Enix too. So. Already. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there is there is that, but also you know, Father of Light. Yeah. Netflix. Well, that's true. That's it's already true. there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so there's still waiting for that movie, by the way, oh, wait, Square. Oh, if oh, no. if anybody oh, no. is watching that has any control over that, need a couple of uh, warm heart feels tears. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I they, they, one thing, they showed the ahead. movie in LA a couple for a couple screenings, but we haven't heard anything else about it since then. So uh, it looks mm-hmm. like we're about to jump into, I guess, uh, emails and things like that. But before, like, I wanted to talk about Xbox One X though as a difference sure. maker yes. versus PS4 Pro. PS4 mm-hmm. Pro increases the frame rate to 60. Uh, so yeah. it is a, you know, it's definitely a boost, uh, a boost yeah. for, the, for the pro itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have there are options, which is interesting because mm-hmm. you know the idea of right again developing for a console is that you know what hardware is there and you can plan for it. But then like PS4 Pro comes out, and they're like, all right, so you can either increase your FPS or you can boost the resolution. I don't, I remember PS3's native res on mm-hmm. 14 was like god awful. I don't. Is it 1080 on PS4 or is it still upscaled? Does anybody know? I have no idea. Yeah, is no it idea. PS4 is 1080. Because it was it was upscaled to 1080 on PS3, I think. It ran at some other weird I did, resolution. Then it, it, it upscaled. Okay. I mean, um, okay. Yeah, 100 percent The um Xbox One X though, it's like I think from a from a console and what it's capable of, mm-hmm. I think probably gives them the the opportunity to have it run really well. Uh, that's and true. that's where I think a lot of people, you know, it'll be interesting to see because I know there was a lot of frustration about Red Dead Redemption 2. Because yeah. it ran natively in 4K on Xbox. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to try for 4K on Xbox One X. Honestly, yeah. I don't care about resolution. Yeah. I care about frame rate more than yeah. anything else. More than anything. We well, yeah, have uh, so. the ability to adjust everything in it too. So. I mean, th- yeah. I mean, there's. Yeah. I think there's definitely. If if it comes out on One X, I would expect the same options. You know, mm-hmm. you can either prioritize your FPS or you can prioritize right. your resolution. But yeah, like, it's like, going to be balanced out to the to the point where, like, if you choose to go the resolution route. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be terrible. You may notice a little bit of you know lag or Jump model loading slower here and there, but it's not <laughs> yeah. going to be anything that's like right. cranking up your resolution and all of a sudden it's unplayable. Like they're not going to release it's, it and let you choose that option. It's just going <laughs> to be you know. lower than they think is acceptable. I mean, those yeah. options anyway, like saying resolution forward option is just, yeah, the frame rate's going to go around. And if you say frame rate, then the resolution is going to go around. Yeah. Like there's a yeah. variable resolution, resolution happening. Yeah. yeah. The, um, that's where like destiny is it's the biggest heartbreaker on console like yeah when you go yeah. play it on pc and even play it on stadia like you're like yeah. it's oh, so great so gorgeous 60 frames per and then, second and, and then you go to console and you're like all right it's a, it's a pretty game <laughs> yeah it's pretty game all right that's yeah that was the last kind of my last note regarding <laughs> yeah. consoles itself. Uh, and then uh, if it comes x cloud that would be i mean inadvertently when the x cloud comes to switch that would be amazing <laughs> i would crash like crazy yeah <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you could still you could still play it on PS4 with a Vita. You craft in bed. Well, my, my PS4 died, so it's like I was. Oh like, well, like, then I guess. Gonna get a new one. I go. <laughs> Never mind. We're 
we're like what 18 months away from ps5 like most likely yeah. it's backwards compatible there, there's there's that oh, and anyway. and really ps4 lost the 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 this like the 0. 0.5 console release because it doesn't play 4k discs I don't right. know what they were thinking. I don't know what they were thinking with that. They anyway, the technology too. It is like Xbox bought, paid, yeah. paid Sony for that mm-hmm. for the Ultra 4K drive. Doesn't make any right. sense at all. Um, anyway, um, so that was that was that discussion. Um, <laughs> thank you for for that joining us. We we wanted to make sure we had Brian on for yeah. that. Nobody, so nobody else could have for, for keeping your tears in. Oh, I loved, oh the, for I this. loved watching My, your video. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. you were just so seven years yeah. it's like a kid on christmas morning it was beautiful it's, yeah it was something that it's like I've, I've longed for this and every time that there was something it's like oh you want it and then finally yeah. when it's true and then mm-hmm. it's been seven years it was a journey that it, it's emotional like it's it, you sure. know like i said like yeah i i enjoy the xbox i enjoy playstation like i i enjoy games and i think uh more than anything else like i love final fantasy and especially final fantasy 14 um, and it's just to see that the game is able going to be uh, provided to more people who have wanted yeah. to experience it. Mm-hmm. I'm in a, a fortunate in, in that situation that I have a computer and a console and I can afford these things. Uh, and that's something we do. Not everybody has that ability. And that's where I'm happy that Yoshi P stuck to his guns mm-hmm. and it didn't, he didn't split the community because that's not that wasn't the right call. And I'm yeah. happy to see that uh, Destiny has cross save. And I would love to see you know more of that brought in uh, and those those barriers brought down. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, I'm really excited for uh, for Xbox uh, fans and people who who enjoy that system. Mm-hmm. I could care less. Like console wars, they're fun from a like, oh yeah. yeah. Sure. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're gamers. We're one community, and we and yeah. and, and, when, and when we have that ability, I think I think games benefit. Yeah. Um, and, and oh, definitely. This, and this will show it. It is a mm-hmm. big bummer to be like, oh, I have Monster Hunter. Oh, I have it too. A PS4, a PC. Yep. Oh, yeah. Or or you know, console Stop. exclusives. I mean, I remember when mm-hmm. when. Um, Rise of the Tomb Raider was exclusive to Xbox for, oh, yeah. for a time. And, you know, they announced that. I'm like, oh, like, that sucks. And you know what? By the time it came out, I had an Xbox One. So I'm like, oh, never mind. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. yeah. And it honestly <laughs> does reinforce, like, a negative feeling with a game or a title. Because mm-hmm. I know so yeah. many people who might really love a game. And I think as a developer or even just as somebody who's looking at the market and the business side, mm-hmm. um, especially, like, MMOs, you want those players to be like, I love this. I want more of it. But if the player, as they're going through it, is just constantly having some kind of negative experience, especially in multiplayers, mm-hmm. things like Monster Hunter, that's a great one because I had all yeah. these friends that were playing yeah. it. I was playing it on PC, they were playing it on console, and it was just so disheartening to mm-hmm. be there. And you have like that one person or this one person in your community that's like, I am so alone in this game and mm-hmm. I really love it, but every time that I log in, I feel as though I'm more and more alone and I don't have the money to do something like a big PC or I don't have the money to do, you know, buy another copy of the game or right, yeah. like all these things. And I think what you really want is your ultimate goal is to say like, let's let as many people make a connection with this game as possible and love it and play together, especially when it comes to co-op or multiplayer or right. MMOs. Like, yeah. I really have hope they go the same uh, route as Destiny. Really do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At a minimum yeah. cross save, but yeah. cross play yeah. would be the it, it would be preferred. And then yeah. you just you just bring in an a to- an optional toggle if it has a competitive mode. So that way yeah, you don't sure. have to yeah. sit here and well, you know, I, I remember, uh, you know, back back when they announced uh you know PS4 was gonna be the, the Call of Duty system, right? Mm-hmm. When they're like, All right, yeah. Xbox three sixty people and we're you know all the exclusives, all the, the time stuff that's going over here. And I just remember like thinking like, ew, like for for many reasons, right? It's like okay, great. Like you have this entire Xbox community for Call of Duty. Now that's gone. You like you just yeah. you know you kick them in the shin. And then like as somebody that like actively stayed away from Call of Duty because I don't need to hear about twelve year olds doing weird things to my mother. You know, it's like I don't want them. I don't want them on my beloved PlayStation Network. You know, it's just, it's such a weird, interesting right. thing. Um, I mean, anyway, it, yeah, it's not over because you got the epic no, game story. No, no. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't. don't let's don't let's not. let's not let's not. Um, all right. So, <laughs> I know. At some point in the future, maybe. No, <laughs> never, never. We get enough of that on our Discord. I don't need it yeah. coming in here too. All right. Um, I wanted to read an email. Uh, <laughs> we got another another email here from uh, from our buddy Paul. It says, while well, listening to the last episode, I collected a few retorts. I figured I'd give you a new player point of view. Uh, this is the point of view, Charles, mm-hmm. of a summoner in solo content. 
Mm -hmm. and a scholar in queuable content. Mm -hmm. uh, one, when it comes Excuse. to mechanics, <laughs> when it comes to mechanics and concepts, uh, while leveling up and doing the eight and twenty-four man content, uh, it's brute force completed. Uh, the basic ideas of getting out of circles and whatnot uh, is taught while leveling, but tethers aren't. Uh, I come from WoW, and tethers could give you one of two clues. You walk away from each other, or you close the gap, uh, which are complete opposites. As I'm completing stuff now, I can say that all I've learned is that circles are bad, and some tethers mean go away from the tether, uh, or in one case, lead to the middle of the tether away from the group, um, and that the only other form of difficulty I've run into is Odin early on, uh, and just recently, Thunder God. Uh, I also have no idea how Construct 7 works, but it was completed through brute force. I have mm -hmm. a macro for yes. for every single, like, I can do the math, but some of my friends couldn't. So I made a macro, and mm -hmm. I have had multiple of them tell me, I did such and such Ravenaster the other day, and you weren't there, and I screwed up Construct 7 so bad. And I'm just right. like, guys, it's just mad. I think I'll never that, forget that week when that came out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this uh, answers in direct response to us saying that going back and playing the content before, like there's a reason to play it is learning mechanics yeah. as well. Yeah, I think and, that's yeah, and and yeah, that's true. A lot of it is brute force. A lot of it you have to look up and then you know how it works and then yes. you see it and it reinforces it. Because yeah, no example is a uh, bone dragon. Right now you just beat the crap out of that. Yeah, you just beat yeah. it. Right. <laughs> yeah, remember, I didn't do that before. <laughs> remember when you had to do mechanics in the, the Crystal yeah. Tower raid series? Yeah. I remember it's mechanics. Like I it's totally answer, understand yeah. this. I totally understand yeah. this because I had a very similar experience when I was first going through the game. And there are pros and cons to 14 letting you have a like, it is a sink, but it's not a sink completely, mm -hmm. right? So the yeah. idea that when you're going in for minimum, I well, sorry, not minimum eye level, sorry, sorry, sorry. When you're going in off of roulette for most mm -hmm. things or off of your party finder, right? You are technically sinking to that content. Right. But um, there are certain factors that aren't necessarily like actually synced and yeah. there is still a level creep. So on one hand, it's great because you can still play old content and there's actually people still doing old dungeons and roulettes are putting people mm -hmm. into the old eight and 24 mans. So you can still go in and experience them, but you're not going to actually get that like step-by-step -step puzzle out the mechanics feel unless you go in minimum eye level right. or like at yeah. that actual minimum level threshold. And that's why I usually do suggest to people like, if you're interested in the really foundational mechanics of this game, go into these like the old X primals and like do them fully synced, do them mm -hmm. minimum eye level. See if you can get a party together like through party finder or through private listings that is actually interested in doing that because then as a player, you are going to be taking those things apart. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait until you get to the end game, until you mm -hmm. get to the actual current level, because then you're going to be going into it with everybody to really get those step by steps. And um, it's important to remember, too, that different types of content will have different types of balancing. Right. So there's some content that is sort of made to be brute force. Right. 24 yeah. man while you may die and there may be mechanics mm -hmm. that you do need to know, yeah. they aren't made to be like, we have to now coordinate 24 cats in a room and somehow get them all mm -hmm. together and make it happen. Like the idea is that you need to know enough of the mechanics to get through it, especially mm -hmm. at release. But, you know, they're not going to expect that you are like a tight eight man static, right? It's yeah. not like you're doing savage yeah. content, which is really about how do I decode what's happening and really break it down. Mm -hmm. um, and with 14, some of that can also be good. If you look at, you know, you go through and do those old dungeons again, even you look at those things, tethers for one, there will usually be different visual indicators, the color of the tether, if it has some kind of effect on it. Too what you're tethered to, <laughs> yeah. if if a yep. circle appears underneath you. And sometimes if you know those mechanics are tripping you up or you're like, oh, what is, I don't know what's happening. Like <laughs> going back and doing some of that stuff, minimum eye level or synced will give you like really yeah. clear, oh, this is when the tether first appeared. Now we are doing an improvisation right. off of the tether. This one is blue, so I have to, do, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> it's interpretive dance. That's all reading is. There you go. <laughs> these, yeah. uh, these things show up in all content. It's in the 24 yeah, lands, yeah. it's in the raids, it's in yeah. the dungeons. You're probably most likely to see them in the dungeons. Right. Uh, there'll be there'll be things that show up in uh, one tier of raiding, and then the next tier of dungeons, they'll be like, hey, remember that crap from before? Yeah. Here or even, even vice versa, they'll do that stuff. I mean, you think of, um, you know, the like the, the pillars in um, Rabbit Aster, right? That, mm -hmm. uh, there was a boss in... Oh, God. Malika's what? Wells. Yes, that, that, yeah, yeah, <laughs> in the well, yeah, 
Yeah, so that's their bat squatch. That guy. Yeah. Bat oh squatch. I just I just did that the other day. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, going back to the email, uh, yeah. number two here. Uh, I often say that I'm a new player the first time in the current dungeon. Normally, the response is, You're I won't angel. pull so much. You're an mm -hmm. angel. Uh, <laughs> and, that, and that tends to be the end of the conversation, mainly because all the content is brute forced. And I just follow people around and making sure that their health doesn't fall too far down and hopefully... Uh, they know where to stand, so I don't take damage. That's how I learned Thunder God, because unlike 95% of the game, this one had no circles. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number three, uh, I came from WoW. It's very obvious in my early gameplay, because healer DPS is not a thing. Uh, I took nearly an expansion and a half to understand that I definitely can contribute. Uh, the further I leveled, I learned that tanks have a whole lot of stuff that makes my job boring in a, in yeah. a little... Um, I'm sure I'm going to run into a wall that's going to teach me to not be bored uh but the leveling process definitely doesn't teach you much of a cycle at least yeah, right. as a healer right yeah that that is something that is very true like learning a rotation and well i mean every mmo is similar to yeah. this there's no way to piece it together yourself i mean you can but you have to understand what each ability means before you can yep. even start to piece it together so yeah that's that's something that i mean most mmos could do way better especially for healer dps like yeah what i i don't i don't do it so like, 6.0 will be very interesting for healers it's ever been now though because you have three right. buttons yeah. <laughs> yeah and i mean you might look into too like thinking about healers in particular i'm a healer mm -hmm. main and i love healers uh look into other healers like if you've found that there's one that you've kind of mastered and you know for example white mage right white mage mm -hmm. especially leveling up it's really straightforward it's pretty simple but if you get into some of the other ones like astrologian or scholar I mean, I think there's a lot more room there to really try to figure out how do I want to make best use of the time that I have. Right. And you're working, you know, more complex things. You're playing a mini game with Astrologian almost with the cards, although it's been a little bit simplified now with Shadowbringers. Oh. <laughs> um, Just a little bit. I have that feeling for and thoughts. <laughs> yeah. But that was a different show. We talked about it already. Uh, but right. I mean, look, look for something that is going to at least give you some you know something to dig into that you're interested in and sometimes that can be buffing or shielding or you know whatever variation and then mm -hmm. i would say really 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 like touch base with this again after you've kind of gone into some stuff like savage or you know like the end game because i get the feeling that you might be a player that is interested in challenge and things like extreme primal savage content mm -hmm. that's really where you're going to see the test of your knowledge for a class sort of put to the test really really right. honestly um and you're going to see that you have a lot to do in those. Whereas, mm -hmm. again, the other kinds of content are balanced, essentially, to be like, we can get through this. There may be a little bit of spice, but it's not going to be something that will hold up players, <laughs> in theory, nice. you know, for a dungeon. If, you know, somebody isn't optimizing their class and doing right. top tier DPS, like they're not supposed to be like that. Right. It's supposed to be an experience in a, in a story and teach you little basic things. Right. Yeah. I, uh, uh, I would like to vote that we change uh, emails to the Paul cast. Paul cast. <laughs> it's the only person who emails fair. us consistently. <laughs> That's fair. Just gets your own the podcast yeah. now. Number four. <laughs> As for hunts, the only uh, thing in the game that uh, has had for hunts was one uh, tier one through three in elite hunts that I kind of just grab while MSQing. Um, and when they unlock uh, as I clear new areas, I've done my best to knock out the 24 and 8 man stuff at the end of each expansion with Coil being the hardest to find someone for until I learned what Party Finder was. So mm. I tried not to miss large chunks of stuff. Nice. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Good. It'd be nice if they could put Coil in Party Finder. Dude, so like, it's again, right? It's like, it's like doing like a main scenario roulette. It's just kind of grandfathered in mm -hmm, at this sure. point. And it's just like, there's no easy way to do it without reinventing everything and adding mm -hmm. trusts or something yeah um and last year number five my lalafell choice came because i was a halfling in D D and a gnome in wow and i stuck to my <laughs> small fun also because i'm six four in real life and started as a joke <laughs> middle school you know, every not every <laughs> but a lot of the lalafells that i've met in this game have been just like tall people and i'm like right. this is wrong. interesting <laughs> well my interesting. Uh, julie uh, as she's a uh, she's a uh, five two and so she always would make tall characters right uh in opposite <laughs> and she's like and that like <laughs> she would try it's like what would what's opposite so she'd make a male like she'd mm -hmm. make everything that was like mm -hmm. not her in real life that's how she she structured her online characters 
especially right. with the Galka in, uh, in 11. See, <laughs> like, my awesome. thing is, like, if I get a new pair of boots, I want to be able to see the new pair of boots, and so I'll <laughs> never play a small character or gloves or literally any piece of armor. Um, <laughs> Paul closes oh. out with, uh, thanks again for reading all the responses. They've been super helpful. Sorry about the length. Cool. Thank you for the email, Paul. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, and I guess going back real fast, because we kind of skipped over this one, so just really, really quick. Um, the new player thing, right? Because I think we talked about that in one of our responses, like let them know you're a new player if you're mm, not sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I would say extend that even further. If you really want them to explain mechanics to you, sometimes people will not do that because they yep. get yelled at. <laughs> Right. Or because they just feel awkward, or it takes a, like a, an amount of time to kind of explain that. But if you say like, "Hey, I would really appreciate it if people could explain the mechanics before we get in," I was the same way when I went through. I wanted to know everything. I was like, "I want to know how this fight works. I want to know mm -hmm. all the stuff. I hate that we just blow through it." You know. So I mean, mm -hmm. the best ways to sort of combat that is to either look for a party of new players. So like, if you're in the novice network, you can say in there. Are there like four newbies who want to go in and do a blind run of this with me? It's my first time. Um, mm -hmm. Or you can say like, hey, can you give me a little breakdown of mechanics before we pull? I really want to know them for myself. Yeah. Or, you know, there's so many different things you can do with that um, where it gives you a little bit more time to learn those and, and actually know. ask if your yeah. take is like a, a quick a pull in. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those. Yeah. It's, you get into a, uh, uh, any kind of instance, right? And people are, you just kind of get into this like trance where you just, you know what to <laughs> do. You just go in, you just do it. And that's it. Um, and so, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I'm new, um, you know, maybe you don't know pull like if, a crazy person like, and also some mechanics mm -hmm. heads up, that'd yeah. be great. But yeah. if, if and they're you, like, oh, we won't, we won't pull a, a lot. If you want them to pull a lot, tell them. Be like, no, yeah. no, yeah. I'd like to see if I can handle it. Yeah. Right. If you're bored as a healer, <laughs> that's an awesome, like seriously yeah. though, mm -hmm. if you're bored as a healer, ask tanks like i want to see if you can pull more like if you're comfortable like i want to try my rotations a little bit more and see how i can use my kit to try and keep you alive because speed runs of dungeons are a real thing and yes. it's actually yeah. really fun as a healer to try and see like oh god how do i pace my cool how do i get mm -hmm. the, how do i get the heals up like i'm out of mana how do i replenish it like that can be a fun way to add some difficulty yeah or you could also minimum eye level dungeons there are a few of those dungeons at minimum eye level that like <laughs> will still just get you and yeah. it's kind of fun to like put a party together and Especially just say if like you're new or you're tanky yeah. new like no. i sastasha <laughs> like two expansions ago sastasha very first dungeon right uh i had a brand new what is it not warrior marauder like yeah. you know mm -hmm. no no upgraded armor at all trying to do mm -hmm. like big long pulls in sastasha and you know i'm like a i'm, I'm a capped healer at the time and yeah. It was still a little tough, <laughs> but it was exactly. fun. Right. Yeah. I would just say, keep in mind that there's a massive range of difficulty in the game. I mean, I'm doing my first ultimate right now, and I thought that I knew what Endgame was in 14, mm -hmm. and now I'm doing ultimate, and I'm like, oh, hell yeah, sign me up. This is awesome. Like, <laughs> we died so much, I didn't even think I could buy this much. Like, and it's really fun. And I think you have to kind of remember that, especially if you're a veteran MMO player coming to the game for the first time. Mm -hmm. Give it some time and experience the full range. When you get to that end game, don't like bank everything on that because the journey is really fun. But mm -hmm. when you get there, if you're looking for challenge, they definitely have it for you. Mm -hmm. So you just have to give yourself like the understanding there's going to be a big range and there's ways to sort of tailor your experience so that it's harder or mm -hmm. easier as well. Yeah. There you go. All right. So that is going to do it for us for this week. Um, as a reminder, next week, we're going to be talking about the 14 hour broadcast and live letter 56 talking about the new patch. We'll talk a little bit about hands on with uh, the blue mage changes and uh, maybe a little bit of PVP. Um, so uh, look forward to that. Uh, if you want, you can email us at aetheredradiogamerscape.com or you can send us a tweet at aetheredradio. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Discord at Gamer Escape. We have an Aetheret Radio channel on there where you can talk to us about the show and give us any feedback you have. Once again, I'd like to thank Brian for joining us. It's great yeah, to have Brian! you back, buddy. Yeah. It's going to be back, guys. So where can yeah, we I find miss you? you. Guys. Uh, for me, uh, you can find us over on uh, work to game on YouTube. We uh, stream occasionally, but uh, we make uh, videos that range from Final Fantasy, Destiny, pretty much covering like if it's an RPG or at least a uh, multiplayer rpg mm -hmm. yeah we're, we're gonna talk about it so we've been uh we're over there we're actually coming up i think we're like 
800 away from 50,000 subscribers. Oh, so, nice. Very nice. No, it's a big, nice, it's man. a big, uh, it's a big number. And uh, I don't know if we'll hit it by the end of the year, but I kind of hope so. Cause I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, starting 20, 2020 off with fit, like 50 K. Uh, <laughs> and then we also actually have uh, like, we we've been doing our podcast uh, and we are coming up on episode 50 here in a little bit. And uh, awesome. we run that and we have a casually hardcore podcast highlights channel, which once we get that, like it's at 400 something subscribers now. So once we can get that, uh, like over a thousand and be able to kind of monetize that. We'll probably just move our podcast, which we publish on the work to game channel, uh, over to that, um, mm. uh, full time. That way that just ends up kind of being its own thing. Mm. Algorithmic wise, like YouTube <laughs> likes things that are very samey. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. this is a podcast. This is a, like, I don't think they like that. I, that I'll, I'll do a Put 14 both. video and a destiny video. And they're like, yeah. you don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do I recommend right. this? I don't know. Right. I don't know. if I <laughs> It's like that video worked that video didn't it's like oh well yeah <laughs> all right so that's gonna do it for us this week we'll uh see you back here next week thanks for tuning in everybody